Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jim? Jim? Jim, if he's down. Yeah, I will. You're going to ask me to turn it up. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting for April 16th. First thing we have is two public hearings. First one is 595 Ocean Boulevard, tax map 234, lot 3, off Winneconnet Road, Spring Marsh. Flyport Realty LLC pursuant to RSA 91 RSA 4114A requesting the purchase the lease of town owned parcel behind Flyport's property at 595 Ocean Boulevard. It is Flyport's intent to construct yeah. a commercial nice. building and hopes to utilize the subject lot for access and its parking as it has been utilized historic historically by the former Lupo's restaurant. Is there anybody from the audience that will, wants to speak on the public hearing? Well, okay. give us your name and address, please, if you would. My name is Daniel Strange, 411A Ocean Boulevard. And I'd just like to uh, speak in favorable um, um, or favorable uh, to uh, to this um, plan you know I've been coming to Hampton for years um, and I've lived in Hampton now for several years I'm now property owner and taxpayer and um, and I can remember going to Lupo's many years ago when they had their specials and they had karaoke and and it was a great place and you know I've been driving by there and it's dilapidated and it's it really needs improvement down there um, and you know there's been some subject of whether people parked out back there or didn't park out back there and I knew when Michael had the, uh, Mr. Lupo had the lease when he had the, the restaurant I, I know people did park there. I parked out back myself um, so that should be a non-issue you know I think it's a great opportunity for the town um, you know, if this property is, is uh, developed and there's enhancements made down there, um, I think it's a great opportunity to have, you know, the property owner clean it up out back. It's, it's not his mess. That mess has been there for years. It was there when Lupo was there, and he never did anything with it. Um, I'd like to see it cleaned up and, and improved. And I think, w I, I, I mean, I, I've been in municipal governments before and on boards, and. I think when you have an opportunity to get an improvement out of a, a property owner, then by all means run with it, you know, wh whether it, you call it linkage money or whatever, it's a great opportunity. It's just, it's just sitting there, you know, overgrown and there's some old blacktop that's pulling up and it's ripped up and it looks disgraceful. If you walk back there and you look at it, I'd like to see it improved um, and, you know, Anybody have any questions for me? I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. No. Okay. All right, so, thank you. All right, thank all you. Right. John Mangino, 329 Winniconnet Road. Um, I'm here in support of the, uh, the project. I think just as frequently in the beach uh, as much as my wife and I do, uh, just to see the area get as nice as possible and use this lot to its best of its ability. Um, you know, make it as kind of neighborhood friendly as possible, less parking. And everyone else's areas obviously would make that, uh, you know, I think make everyone happier. So just overall support of the project. Thank you. Anybody else for the public hearing?
Hey, Ann Dion, the Hampton Conservation Coordinator. Um, I know this was before you guys two weeks ago. Uh, several commission members came before you and I think did a great job of sharing the commission's position. Um, I am here tonight just to provide some clarification on the site layout um, and some of the questions that, I, that came up during your discussion. So um, if you, and the copies that you guys have are the same as what's up here. Um, one of the things is that the commission is not against or has never been opposed to the redeve redevelopment of 595 Ocean Boulevard that's outlined in red. Um, this site has complete full potential for redevelopment under our zoning without the use <coughs> of the town parcel which is outlined in yellow that sits behind it. Um, you'll notice in green that there are both tidal and freshwater wetlands our town's 50-foot wetland buffer conservation district comes out here with about two-thirds of the um, 595 Ocean Boulevard as far as it comes out. Um, and just a couple other quick points. Um, the proposed use of this parcel, parcel at 595 Ocean Boulevard is commercial use. So just to reiterate from last time, um, the business seasonal zone does not require any off-street parking. So this site can be developed without uh, the use of parking on map uh, 234, lot 3. Um, the main outstanding issues that the commission has had is the um, creation of new parking um, in the 50-foot buffer and the addition of four feet of fill to achieve the parking layout that they're proposing. Um, <clears throat> the last piece being also the, uh, the use of uh, town land for uh, private benefit. Um, I think, again, in general, as we um, both have shown in previous memos and in photos, uh, this area floods very regularly and it's just, it's, it doesn't make sense for it to be used as parking. Um, we would certainly like the area to uh, just remain um, natural the best of its ability. Okay. Questions? You have, oh, well, we have one. Ray-Ann, oh, Ray, Ray oh, we have sorry. a question? Yeah. Okay, so <coughs> Ray-Ann, I'm awful at reading maps. Would you mind go? I, I'm trying to correlate this so everybody can see. Would you go over again? Sure. Because I have, okay. Now, according to what I'm looking at here, mm -hmm. On the right-hand side, you've got that, that um, darkened space that says proposed patio, yes. right? Yes. Well, to the right of that, it looks like that's Ocean Boulevard up that. Okay, yes. perfect. So how do people access that property now? They're, they do have a... That driveway? Yes. It says proposed driveway. I think their plans are to resurface. Is that where the blacktop and everything is breaking up? You'd have to put a new, um, it says proposed porous parking area way over on the left. Correct. So what, I see the conservation land, the green and then the, the line through the parcel behind. So this squared in area will be okay. Yes. And then to the left or behind of it, Behind it, it shows proposed porous parking area, which has not been done yet. That's no. Nope. Now, is that the wet part, or is that an acceptable place to put the parking? Well, the parking is not located inside any of the wetland areas, right. which are in green. So down but it in is the, within the wetland conservation yeah. district, which is this yeah. this area out here. So in the and left our, corner, the left hand side. No, down. Yeah, right there. Okay, where it says proposed porous parking area. Correct. Is that, what is that now? Is it sand? Is it dirt? Is it? There is some pavement that's out there. There are some stones that are out there. It's kind of a mix. It's broken of pavement, isn't it? It's There's also some stone. It's, it's sort of a, an area that's been neglected. It's just sand and. It's a combination of asphalt and. Uh, yeah. That, so right that's now the it's messy got water part. On it. Okay. Now, is that is it acceptable to conservation if that area being accessed by this 
driveway. Is it acceptable for conservation if that area is spruced up for parking? No. no. If you look at our wetland conservation district ordinance, it does not um, allow new parking in the wetland buffer. Okay. So, but this wasn't green, so I couldn't tell. I mean, I, well, I'm looking at... Well, that's this line is. This line is denoting from the edges of all the green to the yeah. green line is the wetland conservation district. But that's... I, I'm not trying to be a pain in the neck, but I'm still trying to understand this because this is clear and it's showing right behind that. So I wouldn't assume, because I'm a novice here, I wouldn't assume that that is wetlands area. It, it would be our adjacent wet, to our it. Our wetland conservation district covers that wetlands is plus a 50-foot buffer. In that district. Okay. Yes. And you're drawing a circle around the, the front of the... I don't know. Is there an old building there now, an old decrepit building that's going to be... Restored. Okay. I'm not I don't know what's on that lot. It's ripped down. It yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's been torn down. down. Been so that is a. There's a, just a slab. That's but that's showing in the, the wetlands building. district as well, from what you drew. Yes. The green line. Yes. Okay. So what is the position of the conservation commission regarding the request A to rebuild there and B to not have the parking area? So the position of the commission is they can work within the footprint of the building that they have. Existing. Okay. So the commission is opposed to the creation of four parking okay. spaces. So, so anyone coming to the building that would be new on that lot would have to find parking elsewhere on the beach. Well, it is in the business seasonal zone. It's business. It does not require off-street parking. They, they show two spots underneath, so they could create more parking underneath the building. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll get better at reading maps, maybe. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay Diener, Chair of the Conservation Commission. I'll be very quick. Um, I hope for all the reasons that Rayanne has gone over this evening and that we went over last time that you'll oppose this request. However, if you are predisposed to vote in favor of it, I would ask that you make a conditional on the applicant's ability to secure the required town wetlands permits and state wetlands permits. Uh, Thank you. Anybody else want to speak from the public? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Gerald Flynn. I'm the uh, property owner of uh, the property that we're talking about. I think that the couple of mistaken uh, things here that need to be said is that 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 back lot I also my family and I own the house uh, next to uh, Lupo's um, so it's an L-shaped you can picture being an L-shaped area now that the whole idea is to have a commercial building which may or may not include residential parking the residential parking would be underneath the only way the bank or anybody would fund that is that the driveway would be an exit you go in the back so that the the longer lot, the long gated lot on the right hand side would be an entrance into the underground parking. Uh, more importantly, and as I said to the, uh, to the Conservation Commission when I spoke to them a couple of years ago, when I asked for just an opinion, is that they have allowed both sides of me to go up uh, 18 inches, which created an inlet on my property. Now, when I said I would do anything about within reason to bring that up and to make it, uh, uh, you know, to make it where it's currently right now, you have blocks, cement blocks that are floating in the back, you have asphalt, you have oil spills. Stuff. There's some serious environmental issues there. And I would do everything in my power to clean up that area to make it so that it's uh, feasible and, and uh, put it on the uh, positive tax roll. The, the problem is, when I said that to the commission about the being going up, uh, 18 inches, they said, that was then, this is now. Well, it's not my fault that they decided to grant other people to go up, which now has created that inlet, and when I just, and I had to hire an engineer to go out and see how much it would impact the, the water, and it was minute. And uh, quite frankly, I'm looking for relief here. I've had this property. I'm trying to develop this property. I'm trying to do the right thing by the town. And uh, it seems like there's a roadblock each and every time we move forward. I'm asking permission from this board 
So do your due diligence. I'll, I'll, I'll be more than happy if you call me. I'll take you down. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, not to see pictures of what somebody believes is, uh, is what I'm going to do. And um, I, I, I'd be willing to do that with each and every one of you, or as a group, or whatever you want to do. But that's, uh, any other questions as far as that? I'd be more than happy to answer them. Good. I, I'm sorry to be a pain in the neck, but I, I do. Go up 18 inches for the underground parking? No, no, no. You they allowed both sides of the property to go up. They, they filled those pieces, of those two parcels in the past. Okay. which by filling them has now created the inlet because my property was never filled or the town's property was never filled. So how are you going to get a garage under the building? No, no, you, what I'm saying I is... I misunderstood Yeah, your I'm sorry. And I'm probably not being clear enough for myself, but I'm building it on the, when the, the building that's currently there would be, there'd be a foundation. Right. There'd be a foundation on the other one like this. So when you come down the driveway, you'd be able to park inside under the garage, but you'd also it would give you the, the area to go over to the, the other part, which would also have parking underneath. Okay, but have parking underneath, how high are you going to have to have? I only can go up 50 feet, so that, that includes that amount. Okay. Hmm. Any other questions from the board? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else from the public want to speak? Anybody else from the public want to speak? Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board. Tell you. <laughs> I'm going to bore everybody this evening. Um, I, I am inclined to follow the recommendation of the Conservation Commission. If the a majority of the board does not agree with me, then I would ask that the town and state wetlands permits uh, be a condition of the approval. I have nothing to add at this time. Why don't we hear from Rick? Rick? I'll wait till everyone's spoken. Right. Why don't you go ahead? All right, Mr. Chairman, uh, just to try to get this thing to move along someplace, I went and did the research, uh, the st various statutes that we're trying to operate under. Uh, which is RSA 4114A to start with, which allows this hearing to take place. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that provision of law specifically includes uh, the sale of land by the selectmen for, uh, that is owned by the Conservation Commission and is managed and controlled by the Commission. Uh, so we're not obviously talking about sale here because that can't happen because the statute precludes it. Okay. We are talking about possible leasing or renting of the property. Uh, as you know, we had a, uh, a recent uh, situation where, in fact, we um, changed the conservation piece of land. And to do that, that is to take it out of the control of the commission, it was necessary for the board to approve it and the Conservation Commission to approve it and then to petition the probate court to, to approve uh, the use of the land for another purpose. Um, this land uh, has been taken by the town uh, and the town in uh, several years ago, the year 2000, and uh, several, uh, several other times has voted, in fact, to turn those lands over to the Conservation Commission for conservation purposes only. So my suggestion is that you proceed to complete these hearings. Uh, yeah, it was October 23, 2000, was taken, and uh, we have had articles passed at town meeting in 1994 and uh, in, in 2000 restricting the use of conservation land, restricting the use of land taken for non-payment of taxes uh, that is wet or in, or in a conservation area uh, to conservation use only. Uh, as I say, there is a, there's a way around that and that's the probate court. If the board decides that in fact you wish to uh, lease this property, rent this property, or even sell the property. You can do that, but you're going to have to go to the probate court in order to do it legally. We re the court reserves the right to take that position because the statute does not allow for the disposal or use of conservation land and any other means under the conservation statute. Mm. Just pro I'm pointing this out now so that if you want to do something, there's another process we need to go through. Uh, you can vote to do something, but we have to clarify it in court. So there's no question later on. And there's no sense allowing someone to, to do something and then have a question arise later. That just isn't fair. So 
I have one more question then, Fred, because I didn't understand this when we started the hearing. The, the town owns that property now. I was under the impression that the gentleman petitioning owns it. Owns no, the, the town owns the property. Okay, well, I, that would have helped had it yeah. been clarified right. to begin with. Okay, I see what you're saying. But there is a means to reach the resolution that's desired. It's just that you have to go right. through the process. Right. And it's several processes <coughs> in order to get it done and get it done without question. Okay. Otherwise, it's subject to uh, anyone filing a complaint in the court saying that this was done wrong and, and, and it's void. Okay. And we don't want to go there. If it's going to be done, let's do it right. Because it appeared to me during the conversation that the gentleman owns the property. And I confess, I don't okay. remember. He owns the, the property owns around it. Down the gentleman owns the property, owns the property in front of it, it and to the and north beside of it. it. Right. Okay. Mission Boulevard. Yes. Right. Okay. But the part that's out there was a part that was belonged to the town but is in conservation. So it still and belongs to the town. In the past, the they used to lease it to Lupos. Right. Yep. The town did. Right. Yep. Okay. So that property has been leased in past. Yep. Yes. yes. But not town. filled in. Okay. Right. So. I don't have your knowledge of all the beach Anybody questions. else from the board have any questions? I'll, I'll talk. <clears throat> okay. So basically, you know, I'm in favor of, like, I understand exactly what uh, Mr. Flynn says about the p pieces on each side have been oh, filled yeah. 18 inches. Oh, That's sure. happened all along yeah. Ocean Boulevard. And when you're late to the party, you get uh, left behind. And I, uh, to me, I'm so against that happening. You need to be able to do whatever the other people beside you have done. Um, and so I have no problem with that. And in fact, there are other buildings, like the new one that's built towards the end of the wall. There's been a b real nice looking gray house that's gone in there. That person oh, yeah. put a big, uh, yep. it's basically a basement level, I guess, or a foundation maybe, I don't even really know. But it is to the back there, so they don't get any water in. And um, that's the type of thing that could happen here. But I think what he's trying to do is get so that he can come back there and maybe park underneath this building if it was made to be 50 feet. I can understand that, too. And I think he should be able to do whatever he wants with that front piece of property. Um, and it's I'm not sure, isn't some of that front, with the new building, if he's building a new building, he wouldn't have to build it. The other building was somewhat on the other piece of property at one point. At least parts of it was. Was it a shed or something like that? The back deck, yeah. uh, the patio area that was Which was back. illegal then. Right. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I, I could see how he should be able to build right to the back of that back lot where the other building was. You know, I, I don't really see any problem with that. But I did go by there today. And uh, during the high tide, if you looked out there, the hole from the back of his back lot was completely submerged in water. There was oh, yeah. no green grass showing. I went by there again right on the way to the uh, meeting right now. The, the tide has um, gone back out again. And where these parking spaces are in the back are completely underwater. Mm -hmm. But the marsh shows again behind them. Mm -hmm. So there's a divot there, too. Uh, but I will tell you, while I'm all for people's property uh, rights that are on Ocean Boulevard that have owned these properties, these are some of the oldest properties in Hampton Beach. Mm -hmm. My property goes back to the 1890s, mm -hmm. and, um, and I have moved it. And I went to 35 feet, which was what was allowed then. Now I, you know, I could probably, go, I could go to 50 feet too, and it's something that I'm considering and possibly even having parking underneath. But I have moved my property right to the, you know, my building has been moved. It used to sit in the middle of it. That's why I have a parking area behind it. Um, and it was done 45 years ago. Um, but the problem is for us is we have all these people coming in here with flo fighting, flooding. And if that property is allowed to have four feet of fill behind it, it's only going to add to everybody else's flooding. And I'll tell you that maybe the property that he owns beside him is all for this, but many of the other properties that are on the other sides aren't for it. And, um, you know, no one wants the flooding to get worse than it already is. And that's what keeps happening. But he is entitled to do whatever he wants to his piece of property there. In my opinion, he should be allowed. Maybe there's some way that the town could do something to allow him if he did put raise the building and um, have uh, parking underneath, 
maybe they could uh, have a you know a, a little strip there where he they could have a park you know they he's going to need to put a park a driveway there which I think it says proposed driveway. I'm not sure if there ever was a driveway there. I think it was always a dirt path. It's, it's always been a, it's always been paved to the back of the building. And this is part of the problem. People want, you know, there there's so many of these properties have uh, non-pervious uh, covering, you know, mine included. Um, but you know, so that's what the conservation commission is trying to do is to try to keep this from so that the water can be absorbed. But I could see how he needs to have that parking um, driveway there. And if there was some way that we could help it so that, uh, or maybe he could find another way to, if they raise that building so that they have parking underneath it, maybe they could somehow access his property. But I'm against uh, adding any fill to that back lot. Go ahead. A, a follow up. This is our public hearing. So it's not. Hear. It's not our job to speculate on what could be placed on that parcel that Mr. Flynn does not at this point in time own. Number two, the beach is flooding significantly now, and it will continue to flood. And if we continue to allow building we're going to exacerbate the problem and people will start losing the value on their property because of the inundation. I don't expect that the flooding is going to improve in the coming years. I think it's going to get worse and worse and worse. That beach was built up about 100 years ago and conditions were entirely different than they are now. I agree with you uh, about not putting in fill anywhere in the wetlands. But at this point in time, with the current circumstances, now that I understand more what what we're doing here, um, I uh, I can't support this. Can I? And I would just like to say, you know, again, like she says, it's uh, the beach has been rebuilt. Yeah, these are some of the oldest buildings. Yes. This building itself, I'm not know what year it is, but it's got to be pre 1940s, probably into the 1930s, Rusty. Yeah. Probably 20s. The 20s, 1920s. So it's been there a long time. He should be able to fill that land in. Flooding. That he's not on the land that he has. He's been paying taxes on it too. And he should be able to do that. The other people on both sides of him have been able to do it. Every one of those condos have been How able recently? to do it. They're do they did it probably in the yeah, last the last condo okay. that's been built. Anywhere that yeah. they build, they're allowed to do it. They and if they don't allowed to do it, they do it anyway, and no one says anything. But how and long how long can we the thing keep is, doing this? We're talking about the property he already owns, not the property in the back. I'm not for doing anything to the property in the back, adding no fill. But he has a big piece of property there, and he should be able to do what he wants to it. The circle shows that's in the wetlands, and that he doesn't. Every property own it. on Ocean Boulevard I is know. in the wetlands. And it's going to be worse, way. Rick. But the, the, it the, doesn't matter. You can't stop he, people from doing things. This isn't the way a, it is. He has a right to build. To build, to he already footprint. has a right. There's already a building there. He has a right it's to build. Already a building the there. That's there. Yes. That's what the foundation is. And because is. of that, the, 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 you know, the property to the, as you look at it to the left, which would be 593, that was built in. That was your father's 80, no, place. No, my father's no. is the other side. Oh. Uh, that was built in the um, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. That was filled then. The one even to the south of that, which has a drive-through underneath it. They also use that common driveway mm -hmm. to get to the back of their property back there. Because mm -hmm. when if they have a truck or something that like is in, they have to go that way. Because that the driveway that's proposed through there is a common driveway. I believe it's in, in the town's right of way. If, if I'm not You're correct, I'm correct. That's what I thought. Um, and those properties were <laughs> all filled. Uh, the one back there was filled in the early '80s when my father built his house in in the early '80s. He put some fill there. The, the grass part out back, however, was filled in the late 40s, early 50s by the state. Oh, sure. Because when, oh, they, put, when they put the old metal seawall in, they took all the hot top and all the pavement. And so if you go over in those, that, those backyards that are over there and dig down, you're going to hit hot top and pavement. Oh my God. That so, was what that other guy was referring to that mentioned that there's broken asphalt back there. It could be. That's, That's from part the state. of some of that. That was part of the state. But we the don't state need to put make it, it worse. There. But that, that, that being said, what I believe Mr. Flynn is looking to do is to lease 
the area where it says the four parking spaces mm -hmm. from the town. And to do that, he wants to put in some fill. And so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about that part there. We're not talking about his lot. We're talking about the part out behind. But he, neither he nor anyone else has a lease on that property now. Correct. Right? Oh, the town Correct. So the that town we would, owns it. So we so. would have to go to, we would have to be prepared to go to probate court to override the conservation Correct. commission yep. if we decide that we want to try to lease Correct. that property. Correct. Thank you. Okay. And I think the conservation commission, isn't it advisory? No. No? Actually, land transfer of the conservation commission is outside the jurisdiction of the town. Oh. The way they've set the so statute up different. is that once land is given to the conservation, it can never be taken away except for the court. Yeah. That's... Oh, there's no provision in there to separate the Conservation Commission from their land. Yeah. That's the only statute that authorizes a governmental body to own land that can't be taken away. And I will tell you that everyone that lives around there would love to see another little place like Lupo's go there. Oh, and yeah. he's entitled to do it. And he should be able to fill his front piece of land, not the back piece. Okay. So we have, are you all set? Mr. Waddell. I have a question, actually. Okay, go ahead. So on these four back spots mm -hmm. that the town owns, how big, how, what is this? How big is this that we're talking about? Does anyone know? Like what the it's probably lot size is? I, I don't know. So there's no way to do the parking back there without filling it? Is that? It's been right. underwater all day today. Right. Okay. Oh, it's going to be underwater for feet. the next 50 years. All right, I'm gonna, mm. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Chairman, I just have a question. Yep. Would the town consider, or would the board consider? Mr. Flynn, uh, microphone. I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> we want the public to hear you. Sure, thank you. Uh, just trying to come up with something creative here, <laughs> and I was wondering if, if the board would consider, in, in light of what the, the manager stated, uh, as the, uh, would they consider it as an easement so I could utilize it to get around to the back? And as, uh, Selectman uh, Griffin stated, uh, you know, there has to be a happy medium here. And, and I'm looking to just to utilize that back. I'm not looking to park cars there. I'm not looking to put any dumpster there. I'm the one that tore down that building along with what was on town land before. I'm prepared now to rip up all the, all the uh, concrete that's there to get it down to the, so we can start the foundation. But um, would the town consider, or, or is it, Mr. Manager, maybe the question is to you whether they can... Um, you grant me an easement so I can utilize that to That's, go. That by definition is a transfer of land and they yes. can't do that without the okay. court's permission. Is there oh. an easement there now, like you just said? No, the driveway. The, For the driveway. The driveway is a what? common driveway that's owned goes, by the town. It goes all the way to the back of the piece of property, correct? Okay, <laughs> all the way to the other side of the marsh. Oh. Right. Yeah. So that so. driveway is actually owned by the town too. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Ah. So there's an easement there that he has now. Well, he, he has the right to pass and repass. Nobody's argued that because it's been going on for decades. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's too late it. to make an argument for that now. But nobody but can park there. You can't park there because you would block access for other people who want to use it. Yeah. Now, and we can't give a lease to land to a private individual because that constitutes a transfer in a form uh. of land, and that's for, forbidden by the statute. Hmm. Now, how far does that... So you say that goes all the way across, technically across the... Well, it's part of that huge parcel that's out that's and back. Right. Yeah. So if somebody was to pull in down there, how would they turn around? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. I'm assuming they'd have to turn around on the piece of land that's owned by the town because there's no other piece of land to turn around on. Uh, so maybe they could do an easement to the so that if he did have an entrance to an uh, underbuilding parking area that they could pull in there. Well, not that's an easement. Not an easement. Is there a way we could? Well, there's an easement on the parking spot, though, and the ability the to turn around there. Yeah, the, the, on the driveway, it? and the bit how otherwise, like you said, how are they going to turn around? Well, the town, this gets very confusing, but the town <laughs> took this entire <laughs> parcel of land for non-payment of taxes, including the easement and everything. It's all it's all town property at this uh -huh. point. So that driveway also belongs to those four parking spaces in the back. In essence, yeah, yeah. the right to pass and repass. Uh, in, in a logical sense, if you're going to park, put a car back there, you got to drive down the driveway. You got to turn around somewhere, unless, so, of course, it happens to be a boat car. So I, I I know <laughs> that if you pulled down that driveway, you would have to 
you, you have to go down beyond his piece of property to yeah. turn left into the, the piece of property piece. that would be 391, I mean 591, 593. You have to pull down beyond that to get into that property. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So, so. Um, you can't turn that sharp otherwise. Right. Yeah. So I, th I think what Rick's trying to say, is there any way that, that he could be allowed to turn right off of that to get under the building? I think your avenue of retreat here is to the probate court, okay. same as it was in the last piece of property we, we, we changed to another use. So in other words, if he, if he doesn't do that, when he builds this building, he's not going to be able to use that easement either. He can use the driveway because it, it's attached to his building. He just he can only go to the back of the building and he can't use it for parking in it. Right. Because it's open to the rest of the That's property. why it makes sense to go to the probate court and get permission to do it. If the court will allow it. If so the court will allow it. As long as the selectmen of the Conservation Commission say it's okay, the court will allow it. I think. I if can't court, tell you for sure they'll do that. But if the court will allow the lease of the property itself. Well, not lease right? use. The use. Use. Even the court can't change the statute. Okay. So So you're not it, just talking the driveway, you're talking the ability to use. Not necessarily own or, or, or lease right. on a permanent Everybody, basis. Yeah. But you're that, talking of that property. That driveway has the ability to be used it because it's it's already been that way for so many years. Yeah, it's right. It's, 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 it's ancient. It's, but the place to construct that, that, that square. That is that what he has. He already owns it. That's what I'm talking that's about. Well, I asked film. that, and, and I was told, told that it was leased. We told you that. No. They I, told we, you I just asked for it. No, only, this is the only. The place where the original building was. Just this is where the town land is right in here. That's the conservation. So the, that's already his. He so can Mr. Do Flynn he owns that. that part. Yes, he does. Up front. Yeah, so right. Ray, Ray Ann, can, Whew, can I ask okay. you a question? Oh, if they were not to put parking spaces back there, but allowed access to get into their building, mm -hmm. how would you guys feel about that? I'd have to see how it was configured, and I'd certainly want the rest of the commission to take mm -hmm. a look at it. Um, I know, in general, they're certainly that's better than having the parking spaces out there. Um, I guess I would encourage them to talk to the commission about it, but I can't say for certain how they would feel. But it sounds like either way, we're going to have to go through the probate court to do anything with this. So, but at this point in time, I think. I'm thinking the consensus of the board might be to have them, you know, if, see if there is a way we can get so that you can have access to the back of that without parking back there. Mm -hmm. Because that driveway, like I say, that driveway has been that way since time began. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know I've seen maps back in the 30, 20s and 30s yeah. that had that driveway in there because it was access to the salt marsh. Mm -hmm. And it was also access to the barns and stuff when people had horses back there. Mm -hmm. So that's what it was for. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I'm not saying that I disagree with, you know, don't disagree with you about not having the parking out there and, and filling it, mm -hmm. but I, 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 I'm hoping that we can come up with some compromise to at least allow him to get into the back of this property so he could put parking underneath. But okay. not filling it. Okay. Yeah. There's a creative way to do this. We just have to sit and figure it out. It may be yeah. elevated. It's an elevated parking space that he could drive into the back of the you building. Could have, you could have it somehow just, so, you know, pour us. Not seat. fill it. John. It's two I mean, weeks before the next meeting, right? Right. Yeah. So if he were to come up with a plan and get together with the Conservation Commission, get together with the town manager, and then we could have it for the next the next public hearing. Let's see what we can not, work out. We're not voting it? until two weeks, right? Right. right. Yeah. So, okay. so if he had a creative plan and he need, but he's got to go. Um, the Conservation Commission does meet next Tuesday on the 24th. So they do meet on the 24th. Could, he could be added as an appointment to come and discuss an alternative. That's good. Certainly possible. Okay. Good. This can be resolved. Hearing them, to the, we'll close this public hearing at 739. We will open up a second public hearing for 9 Dover Ave, map 104, lot 203, release of the town loan deed restrictions on formerly leased land. The provision of the deed is from the town to which, seek, which the relief is requested is paragraph 4, which restricts against the premises being subdivided, although the lot is not going to be physically subdivided. Right. So anybody here that wants to speak on that public hearing? 
Yes. Which hearing is this, Mr. Chairman? This is the second, second one. one. Nine Dover Ave. Second of three? Second two. of two. Second of two. two. If you look okay. on the uh, agenda, it's there. Good evening. My name is Patricia Malone. I'm the property owner, and I'm just here if you have any questions. Okay. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak on this public hearing? Seeing none, I'll bring it to the board. Mary Louise? I don't have any questions. I don't have a problem with this. Regina? I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Good. Good. Jim? I'm Rick? I got nothing from the board, so I guess we'll, we'll go on for the next meeting. Two weeks. So, yep, so we will close this public hearing at 7.40. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Public comment period. Does <sighs> anybody from the public would like to speak? Probably all like to go home. Seeing none. <laughs> <laughs> announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise. Uh, I have nothing this evening. Regina. Yeah, I just wanted to say I came back and I was going through a bunch of paper today um, really? but I saw this letter from the superintendent of schools and I thought that it was really nice because I was really glad that our police it was actually uh, it went to the yeah. police chief the deputy chief and also the fire department about how the fire and the police did a couple of uh, safety forms yeah. Yeah. over nice. at the school and it was very comforting to a lot of the mm -hmm. parents yeah. and uh, yeah. I just wanted to say that it's nice to see that stuff being done in this day and age. Yeah. I was there. It was very yeah. well done. Okay. Jim? Uh, just sad to say that it appears as if spring has been canceled this year. <laughs> <laughs> Rick? Yeah, I would um, like to uh, take the time to uh, thank Mr. Hartley that passed on from yeah. the tr uh, oh, trustees. Yes. Uh, he did a nice job and he worked really hard and I was kind of surprised when I turned the page yeah. the paper and saw his uh, smiling face in the obituaries yeah. um, so about I'm glad to see that he didn't have a real long time of yeah. suffering so that's good and then I wanted to uh, thank Max at the uh -oh. Hampton Union he wrote that story that about me even though it had a few things in it that weren't quite right um, <laughs> there was more than a few actually but he meant well and he was there and I got a lot of really good feedback in fact I got a lot of feedback from people from all over the United States that don't live in Hampton anymore but they still read Seacoast online so it goes to show you Hampton's that type of town that people yep. still want to keep up with it the big one, Max, was that I've never had a trans, uh, transfusion in my life. I had blood taken away instead of added. Um, but the other thing where I was misquoted was about what we're going to be talking about here tonight was about the, uh, uh, it was mentioned that I was adamantly opposed to uh, the things about the pipe against the, against the marsh. What I said was I was opposed to talking about it until we hear what's going to happen here tonight because we really haven't been briefed on it and when we're briefed on it tonight here uh, we're going to know and we, none of us here sitting at this table should be making any decisions on what's going to be there until we hear what is proposed and what's recommended and what the experts are going to do and what the vendors that have been there before these are the things we need to know before we can make a good judgment so I'm not necessarily opposed to it I just want to hear all the facts, which we haven't heard yet. Thank you. I thought you were going to say that he called you 29 years old. That you, no, you I didn't want to be 68 years old, but I finally agreed to that after he twisted my arm for about a half hour. I, I have a couple of things. One I have is uh, uh, Rockingham uh, Nutrition Meals on Wheels is doing their March for Meals campaign. Uh, and uh, they've actually invited me to, to go for a ride along with them as they deliver. Uh, they delivered a, a hundred seniors in the town of Hampton, wow. hmm. which is, is an excellent, and they do it day in and day out. And this is a lot of times some of these seniors, that's the only people they get to see. Mm. Yeah. And so yeah. this is a great program, and if you ever have a chance to help them out, they're always looking for volunteers. But the Meals on Wheels, uh, we have a program right in town. It's uh, Martha Jones is a site manager here in Hampton. Uh, so just a shout-out to the uh, Meals on Wheels and to... Uh, thank them for uh, all they do yeah I forgot to say 
that tonight was the first night that the soup kitchen was down at the fire station. <laughs> the fire station stepped up when, when Bob Preston's uh, property burned, and so they had the, the soup kitchen down there, and, and Rusty was down there helping out, I guess. Yeah, you kind of stole my thunder there. That's a little oh, sorry. bit. That's all right. <laughs> I was down there today to uh, just to check on them, and uh, the, the Hampton Rotary was down there, and they were, they were, it was their night to do it, and they started, and they had some people. Tough night to start with the weather that was blowing down there. What was but, on the menu? Uh, it was uh, hamburgers, hot dogs, sausage, potato salad, uh, regular salad. It was a nice thing, and chips, but it was it was nice just to see the people down there. And I really appreciate the fire chief for stepping up and the men and women of the Hampton Fire Department for stepping up and allowing that to happen. It's only going to be about five weeks uh, because they normally close the, down theirs in May or mid-May. So, But they've allowed that to happen. And so um, I think it, it, it's great that they did do that. Rusty, has the Last Supper been hung up? That yes, it is. It was hanging on the wall behind it, in there. So that was, that was great to see. Um, uh, Mr. Town Manager, I, I know you have in, under new business uh -oh. Uh -oh. talking about um, the vacancy that's uh, uh, for the trustees of the trust fund. And I know uh, Steve Falzone is here. Instead of making him wait all night, is there anything that we need from him or ask from him? or? Well. The, the statute provides, RSA 669 provides that the vacancy is filled by the Board of Selectmen for the remainder of the unexpired term. Uh, but my suggestion uh, has always been that the Selectmen should inquire of the trustees or whatever officers are involved as to what their desires would be and who they wish to nominate. Okay. So is that okay? Is that all you need for now? And then uh, we'll, we'll wait to hear back from you. Again, we're sorry for your loss. Bill did a lot of good work on that committee and, and uh, <coughs> was a valued person on there. So, all righty. That's good instead of making him wait. Well, I see him sitting up there and I know yeah. he, he was going to have to sit to the very end and I don't think that's, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, good. So we have the approval of uh, minutes, corrected to approval of minutes of April 2nd, 2018, public session. I'll make a motion. Second. All those in favor? I just want to make oh. a quick uh, correction. Yep. I, I uh, asked for my, the spelling of my name to be corrected. It okay. And that was? On page 15 of 18. Yeah. So long okay. as we get your name right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, minutes of April 2nd, non-public session. Move it. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Minutes of April 9th. Move it. Second. All those in favor? Abstain. One abstention. Regina's abstaining. <coughs> we have the consent agenda. We have the uh, new veterans credits. We have a change to veteran spouse. We have a new veteran credit and new elderly exemption. We have conservation commission appointments. Raymond as a full member. We have donations to the Conservation Commission. We have rain barrel program. Uh, Aquarium Water donated the eight barrels, $600. Wicked Awesome Paint did the paint and primer uh, for 500 And Wayne's Auto Body uh, clear-coated the barrels for 14 We have parade permits for the New Hampshire Towing Association. We have a request for no objection to serve alcohol, beer, and wine at Pizzeria 339. Ocean Boulevard. When a kind of high school request to use the Ashworth Ave parking lot for the junior prom, mar prom march at the seashell. Also move, Mr. Chairman, to accept that. Move. Seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Appointments. Carol Granfield, along with the assistant town manager. Uh, Carol's from the Municipal Resources to talk about the wage and classification study. Thank you for coming tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll start off briefly, just give an overview of what, what brings us here and introduce Carol to go over the presentation. Um, you know, since I assumed my position, there's been a couple of different times the board has asked me to kind of um, go over and make some recommendations with regard to salary issues going back to you know, early 2015 and 16, we did that. Um, and in 2017, um, Selectman Barnes and Waddell 
uh, taken on um, the, the task to kind of overview that, look at the salaries, and make recommendations. As a result of that process, um, it was recommended that we go out and hire a, a consultant, a group to come in and do a comprehensive study of our salaries um, the, with the idea of creating a matrix for the board to consider as well as go over our job descriptions. Um, and so that led us to contract with MRI, Municipal Resources, um, who came in and completed that task for us tonight. Carol's here to present the findings on the salary study report. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Carol and we'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, pleasure to be here and give you a report on the study that we started uh, last fall. The, the goals, I'll give you a quick run through of the kind of the process that we had. Um, the goals were to collect uh, wage and benefit data from some comparable communities, um, to develop a, a system that would be contemporary and um, for pay and classification for 34 of your non-bargaining positions in the town. Uh, and we also had procedures for maintenance of the system once it's in effect and to update the job descriptions uh, in a uh, legally compliant uh, format. The method we use, and we've used this uh, for many years with many communities, primarily all over New England, uh, includes uh, four components, job analysis and job descriptions, uh, evaluating what the actual positions are, uh, we do a salary market review, uh, job ranking and rating. You now have a system that can be utilized for internal value of positions and develop and update the plan. And uh, you didn't have an actual plan in place. Salaries were increased, but there's no minimums, maximums, any of that, which we wanted to update for you. The process we used, uh, we had an orientation. So all the employees involved heard what we were doing, so it wasn't a surprise. Uh, that was in the fall. They completed questionnaires uh, and had interviews. We interviewed all the employees to further clarify what their positions were about. Uh, we analyzed the salary data that we collected and the benefit data and then developed uh, a salary schedule and a classification plan where we grouped the positions developed new job descriptions and had a cost estimate based on bringing the positions to at least the minimum level uh, and developed a final report with recommendations. Uh, the criteria we had uh, for comparable communities and we worked with the town to come up with that and took feedback from the employees as well. Uh, we looked at size, population, income, form of government, location, budget size, and ones that were similar. These are the communities. We actually, uh, we ended up with 11 communities. Uh, we added in, and it's not on this list, Portsmouth, because that came out of the uh, meetings we had that we should utilize those. Uh, we did not receive uh, feedback from Laconia, and we also had Bedford in there. But these are the communities that we uh, surveyed for both salary and benefits. Uh, we did a benchmark review, and I'll talk a little bit about it's in the appendices, putting a range for the positions, looking, um, we primarily target the averages of those, and we um, modified, so if a community had 40-hour work week or 37-hour work week, we modified it so it was comparable, so it was comparing apples with apples. Uh, based on the hours of work. Uh, the job descriptions we developed uh, are format that it has all the essential functions, job specifications, knowledge, skills, and abilities, and all of that. We actually have four rate, uh, rating factors that um, um, can be utilized uh, in HR to develop the internal equity. And there, I'll just quickly run through, there are 14 Oops, 14 components, uh, physical environment, and all the positions have varying values, uh, and it varies based on the actual makeup of the position. Your training and education, problem-solving skills and effort, physical skills, 
experience level, interaction with uh, others, customer service, confidentiality, occupational risk, complexity, supervision, three levels which receive supervision given in scope, judgment and initiative, and accountability. So those are all the factors we use in rating. This is a, a snapshot of kind of the process. We start out with the job analysis and documentation, looking at the elements of the position. Meanwhile, on the right side, we're taking the survey and analyzing the market data received. To the left, we're then evaluating the positions with those 14 factors we talked about. And then we pull it all together and reconcile so you have internal and external. You may have salaries way out here, but then they have to fit into your schedule uh, with positions and develop the actual pay and classification plan. Uh, the final documents, uh, you'll have the position descriptions, uh, grade schedule, uh, a rating manual, uh, the pay plan, the findings, and um, we have all those documents in the final reports which you have. This is the findings, um, and you at the end can answer any questions you may have. We did have the market data in Appendix A that has 11 communities, and you can see them across in Appendix A, and we basically tried to look at the average and compare the average of those communities to see where you fell. And if you were within about 10 percent of that, it's felt it's okay, or we kind of target the 10 percent range. If you're, some may be higher, some lower. Um, and on the actual pay plan and salary schedule in Appendix B, uh, we classified, so we have groups of positions in, in the grade structures there, and it's a blend of those 14 factors that we evaluate and look at the market and say, okay, what makes sense for those positions? We ended up with 14 grades, uh, 35 percent. You currently do not have a maximum and minimum, and that's why in looking at it, uh, salaries would increase, but you didn't really have a minimum level or a maximum. They just kind of increased as time went on, and it's something you need for uh, both recruitment and just for growth for the positions. Uh, so now you have a 35 percent spread from minimum to maximum, and it gives you that flexibility when you hire someone. If someone has a lot of experience, they may be hired at a higher end, uh, but you have a range. Uh, the, to bring the, what we recommend is to bring the employees to at least the minimum, so that entry level. You may have people that have been here that are, don't even meet that to have a, a reliable salary. Uh, it impacts to bring their 15 employees uh, to bring them to the minimum level, and primarily it was, well, there are a few positions, but it focused uh, mostly, it was in assessing, recreation, and IT. And um, then there are a few other positions in other departments, but those were ones that hadn't met the minimum. Um, and then it does not address, and I talk a little bit about that in the report, uh, compression issues. And what compression is, uh, so this brings everyone to the minimum level at least. Then you may have, and this is an added cost if the town desires to do it uh, either now or at a later point or take a look at it, you may have someone who's been here, say, 15 years, and they're just at that minimum level. Well, you may hire someone else in a similar position, and uh, the person who's been there 15 years should have a little more experience and make more more, so that would be a determination you could make. Um, one thing this does not address, and I emphasized it with all the employees during the orientation, has nothing to do with performance. Uh, you, if you have a, um, I don't know that you have a performance system in place right now. Uh, if you don't, that's a way people can move through uh, the range there. Uh, but it doesn't address whether someone's an excellent employee, an average employee. Uh, we ana analyzed it, but we didn't evaluate positions because if someone wasn't at that level, they probably shouldn't be here if you question that. Uh, 
on the Appendix C, we looked at the benefits. We analyzed all the benefits, and you have the spreadsheets on those. Uh, and we look at that because for total compensation and public sector typically has good benefits and salary sometimes are a little lower perhaps than private sector but when you combine your benefits and salary that gives you the total compensation and uh, your benefits are very comparable uh, the only areas that they might have been lower on that could be looked at down the road were the amount of sick days people had and longevity some of the others you can see um, provide for that or give some compensation. Uh, the job descriptions are uh, updated and legally compliant. In the recommendations we made, there were two positions. We listed all the titles as they currently are, uh, but you may want to change the foreman for gender purposes to a crew chief or something else and could change that. Uh, and the town manager's administrative assistant, seeing you have other administrative assistants, uh, may be more appropriate to title that as an executive assistant. It doesn't change the grade we're recommending, just a title you may want to um, determine. <coughs> um, to update and maintain the classification and pay plan, uh, you should review those positions as they change, when turnover, when someone leaves or some new duties are added, they should be looked at to determine if it needs to be changed. Uh, review uh, analysis of new positions, and periodically we suggest every at least three years to look at the salaries overall. And updating the schedule uh, when COLAs are granted, because otherwise you become far behind. If you don't, you, you have this new system now, and if you don't grant a cost, if you grant a cost of living but don't increase the schedule, you're going to be behind again. You're going to have to contract with someone else coming down the road to come in and say you should have increased at least the whole pay scale with a COLA. So those are the um, kind of a quick overview for you, and you have the reports. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have or any of the information. In there. Mr. Chairman, what is your intent? Um, we, we received the report, and tonight you passed out the existing, you know, the non-union employees that are mm -hmm. annually considered for a, a pay increase. Is Are we going to address this tonight or just the study? Two different, uh, it, yeah. uh, they are two the different study. things. That's we're why working I'm on, the we're on the study for right now. Right. And then we will come back at some point and address I'm, the. Because I'd like to address the salary schedules or increases, if any, uh, in a reasonably timely manner. So we're not waiting till November to pick no, up the we pieces. We all want to do that. We all want to but, do that. But um, I'm just looking at this tonight. I'm not prepared. A and you, right. None of us are. We just got okay. it. A little while ago, so okay. what right, right now we're just looking at the job. What the, did the, the study cost? Work. What did it cost us to put this together? I believe it was what eleven thousand six hundred something like that. The can, I, can I just jump in? I just want to I just want to say that it was a couple of years ago right. that I know I was one of the ones, and I think Regina yeah. was one of the ones yeah. that were looking at I how we gave at the time. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. That we we're looking okay. at how we gave out. Uh, raises and stuff, and that there was no no structure to it whatsoever. No. That it was very extremely subjective, and it was all hodgepodge, and we didn't have a schedule of, no. of what people do, how many hours they work, what a minimum, what a maximum should be, what grade they should be on, and that, that we had requested of the town manager that he go out and get somebody to do a thorough study of it and come back with a thorough report on what was done. And at that time, the board took a vote on whether to go out and hire an outside consultant. And it, was a, it was a unanimous vote, I believe, of the board to do that. And I am extremely pleased with what I see here. I mean, it's a start. It's a good start. And I'm not, again, ready to vote on anything tonight except maybe to accept this report. But it, it, it starts to give us a structure to our pay scale. It starts to give us a structure to our employees. It starts to tell us that if somebody's coming in and they're looking for the uh, director of DPW, you know, that we would be saying, well, that job is on the 10th, 
grade or, or 11th grade, I forget which one it is, and the minimum there and the maximum. So that you've got something you can look at and you can talk about and people can look at. And also, I think employees should have the knowledge that they can move yeah. ahead, that they can get a, a, a raise, and that why they're getting that raise, not just because the town manager likes them or the or, the, or if that year the board of selectmen decides to be very nice and give out a lot of raises, but that there's a structure to it and that there's a structure that we can start following. So I think, I mean, I've read this, I've looked over it, I've had questions with, with the assistant town manager about it, and I, I think it was pretty well done. And uh, I, I, I think we should accept it, but I think we shouldn't vote on what we're doing with it. If, if I may real okay. quick, yeah. we're not asking uh, tonight to, to make any decisions on this other than just see it and it hasn't really even been released to our staff. And we're gonna, we expect to get some feedback with this information. We, uh, Carol came in and met with the staff during the interview process to develop this. We'll release this out. We wanted you to see it first. You got it last week. We'll release that out so that we can get the feedback from them. Consider that and bring that back to you so that you can, you can globally make decisions. Okay, I see that, uh, you know, I like almost everything I hear heard here, and I'm not prepared to accept this tonight either um, because I think you have one listening to what your criteria was I think you've made one glaring mistake here um, looking at all those towns that uh, I, I think Hampton's comparable to most of them uh, and I know some pay more probably some pay less but you you know I'd like to know why you included Portsmouth because Portsmouth has nothing to do is not a bit like Hampton yeah. in any way. So would you, could you tell me why it's you would city. include Portsmouth? Yeah. It, it is a city, and I think that came, we initially did not have it in after we had the um, employee meetings. And I think primarily because it is close, it's, it's a, a neighbor up on the coast. Uh, there are people that go back and forth, there are differences. Um, but it was one that was felt uh, they wanted to take a look at as well. So we spoke with the assistant and said, yes, yeah. go ahead. Well, I think you need to change that. And before I'm willing to accept it, I, I would rather see these things refined to eliminate Portsmouth. It is a city. Uh, Portsmouth is double or maybe even triple the size of Hampton. Um, it's the, build, the physical town itself is huge. It probably has a triple size budget um it has it's not anything like hampton it's a city council uh versus a uh, board of selectmen um it's uh for what your uh you know is portsmouth in appendix a if it is i'm not prepared to accept this study because i don't think portsmouth has so anything to do with hampton yep the town manager of portsmouth makes City fortune manager. compared to what Fred makes. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the, uh, if I, that's the bell curve issue we yeah, talked well, about. Yeah, and, and to answer not. your question, it is included in the averages that you well, see on It needs on to be taken out a. and readjusted. Right. Understood. I, to me, again, this that's is why not that's, at all. We this, is what, the this is what ruins your study. Other than that, I thought it sounded pretty good. But why anyone, and I wish you would have came to the Board of Selectmen and asked that question, because I don't think anyone here would have agreed to that. And so in t until I heard that, I thought everything was good here. I would like to know um, about, uh, you mentioned about hitting the minimums. Did any of our uh, employee classif classifications meet the maximum? No. No. That's and now there, there's, uh, that's one real positive thing, because right now you don't have any range. So no one was way beyond, so that's yeah. good. There's room for growth, so your yeah. employees are and able to. and I can understand to. that. And what about, um, uh, did any of the benefits meet the maximum? Uh, you can Probably see. Probably, would be my guess. The benefits, some, some were very beyond, well, and some. Beyond the maximum of some of the towns. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it varied. Overall, you were very comparable, but, uh, but you were But there were, were the some that were above versus there weren't any or the same we, you know some of the key ones of course well, I think your study is good I liked everything you say I like your style of how you said it but when you said that about Portsmouth I think it's all wrong <laughs> that uh, to respond like to, to that if it's redone. if there's uh, as I stated before that's one piece that's looked at so if the town wants to have that one we can remove Portsmouth and it would change the 
uh, averages there. It's not going to change what's in the study, but if it if it would make uh, the board feel better not to have it in there, as I say, we do look at, at things and talk with the town, but if it's something now that it's at the board level. I think the whole town will feel better. I think everyone that lives in Hampton thinks Portsmouth is totally out of control. We certainly don't want to start competing with them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like what you do with the different towns and cities. I mean, I don't really think Hampton's comparable to anywhere else in the state because there's not very many places that their population increases 500 times. They're, they're all a little three, different, You know, yeah. it's like, so yeah, I'm sure you must have taken some for some reasons. Yeah, it, and it's a very, and it just reasons. gives you a picture, and, but it's not locked into, you know, I live in Meredith. We're a, we're a, a tourist right. community yeah, exactly. as well. It's, it peaks, and then it's much it, smaller. It, it can offer one other, that one of the discussions we had, and this is mm. always one of those challenges, is who do you compare yourself to, right? And a number of the feedback we received was we should be comparing to northern Massachusetts towns as well. Mm. We had that discussion. And our assessment of that was, on the whole, it's not salary-wise comparable, mm. despite the fact that we're in competition in some cases of people crossing the border. Right. Using New Hampshire towns is what we felt was appropriate, because in general, many of the positions are, are higher salary down in Massachusetts. It's a different deal. Uh, but there are some arguments employees make. For example, our fire department. They go down and fight fires at mutual aid all the time down in Massachusetts. Right, valid argument. But from our perspective, we felt that going down and comparing to those communities might skew the results we would stay in New Hampshire. That's what led a little bit, Rick, to of why Portsmouth was included as mm -hmm. well, because there are some comparisons to Portsmouth on certain mm, things. And us, so. you know, I understand. But we had that judgment back and forth. All right, let's exclude the Massachusetts ones that may have been more similar to us in scope, but Massachusetts's salaries are somewhat higher for a number of reasons. Right so we excluded those. Great to your point there. I have some good feedback, I think, that can go in, you know, because I was just down there for a hospital uh, stay, and, and I've been there before for a hospital stays, and you start talking to the nurses and stuff like that. Interesting enough, uh, even when they have Massachusetts accents in that, I would say, you know, just making conversation, where do you live? They almost all live in New Hampshire, right. and <laughs> yet they all work there because the pay is so much bigger. Right. But, and you know, they, at least two people said to me, we could never afford to live around Burlington or Woburn because the ta the, even though Woburn is kind of, you know, got the same element of people that you get here in Hampton, uh, half of Hampton's from Woburn, um, they can't afford those houses down there. So all of those people, uh, so many of them come and they buy houses up here in New Hampshire, even though they do have that difference of the tax, you know, having to pay the Massachusetts state tax and this and that, it still works to their advantage to live in New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. So. Regina, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to say a couple things about the study. I, you know, how many people did you test for non-union? You said 30-something? Uh, 34, I believe, yeah. And how many do we actually have? For non-union positions, yeah. that this totaled all of our non-union positions. This okay, looked so at all, all of our them? stuff. Yeah, all of our non-union folks. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so if you were or to take me, Portsmouth, all non-union that's under the authority of the board of selectmen. So if you were to take Portsmouth out of this appendix A, I mean, I think this report is great, but if you were to take Portsmouth out. That's pretty much just going to change all your that, figures right. over here by whatever it is. Right. right. It's yeah. just going to okay. change right. the, the average. It's not going to change anything in the actual report, and we would just take it out of um, and both then, the benefits as well. We take it out of the benefits and the. And then on Appendix B, this proposed pay plan, when you group everything from 1 to 14, 1 being the lowest mm -hmm. pay grade and 14 being the highest. This is all proposed by you, just by yeah. doing the study? Yes. Okay, and then, so this is almost like a proposed org chart, this, this organizational is a, chart. It, it's a proposed uh, salary that goes salary. with the next, uh, the classification plan. And as we talked earlier, once you receive this, then the town, you can make ch things change. And I mean, a lot of communities, whether it's with positions or that, 
you may ultimately, before you adopt something, make some modifications. This is what we see and are recommending to you based on the study we've done. But then it's, once it's in the hands of the town, you can make changes as you see fit. Yes, and I really liked how you brought up the fact how we don't really have any starting point or Yeah, that was limit. a big, yeah, you don't have any structure, I, I think, think, as you said. I think this is the point of what Jim and I were trying to, mm -hmm. you know, get instead of just randomly, okay, this year, you know, cost of living is 2%, give everyone 2%. But then, like you said, we have people that are coming in new, mm -hmm. and in some cases, people that have been there, like the, the way the is that, that have weighted a, is not right. So now you have a structure right. and system versus, uh, and, and the concept people feel sometimes, well, why did you pay so-and-so uh, X amount of dollars when they came in? Oh, well, they were a good friend of, and that may not even be the case, but you had to come up with a salary. Now there's a range and you can develop a little more structure in your system. Thank you. My voice? Yes, thank you. Um, we had a private petition article pass uh, at our March uh, vote, and the article essentially said that the raises annually for the non-union personnel should be restricted to the annual cost of living. Uh, it's an advisory opinion, but uh, I think that it certainly has merit We've not had a large turnover in employees in Hampton. Uh, we have a lot of longtime employees, like in public works, we're losing a lot of older 30-year employees right now. But generally, uh, if people don't like the salary they're making in Hampton and don't like the working conditions, they leave. Uh, the other thing that I think we need to address because I've done a little, I read the report and I've done a little research. Um, in addition to uh, annual raises, um, I looked in the 2017 town report in the wage section and one column that got me a little excited was the buyback payout column. 331 thousand four hundred and thirty dollars and twenty three cents Mary, Mary Louise what does that have to do with the non, well, non contract hey. that's contractual stuff we're yeah. talking about this study and well, the non contract I, I just wanted to get a little better explanation of that before we go in uh, right I think that we need to just focus on basically more on the cost of living. I'm not talking about hiring new employees, but for existing employees, uh, focus on the cost of living or if there's some extraordinary circumstance that has changed the way um, they're required to do business. Uh, I don't want to get too, um, too excited about what other communities are doing. And I agree with Rick on Portsmouth. The, um in the past, we've tried to compare or, you know, go along with our non-union workers, you know, keep the same sort of guidelines that went with the unions a little bit, you know, try mm -hmm. to keep it in the same neighborhood. Now, I ask um, the uh, a deputy or whatever you want, Jamie, uh, the <coughs> assistant town manager, <laughs> What, what, do you want to call him? <laughs> yeah, what what do we call you? Jamie's the executive. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, what a, Jamie's fine. Okay. Um, does this give you any guidelines that you might use in future negotiations, or where we've done it the other way? We've tried to do it yeah. with the union negotiations to influence these people in the past. How does it go with the shoe on the other foot? Well, historically, the unions are at the negotiating table, and the non-union folks are just at the whim of what the board's decided to do. There really right. isn't much negotiation at all with them. It's no. what the board decides. Now, you, when you're talking you're about giving consideration, though. Well, yeah, sure. The board happened. does with regard to policy decisions, yep. generally for benefits. So you have, for our non-union, we have the town policy booklet, which, again, is separate from this study. But the town policy guidelines that the board's adopted over the years is the handbook by which our non-union employees and where the contracts are silent guide how we deal with employees. And there are certain benefits in there that have come from uh, sort of equivalencies to the unions, at times. 
uh, but the board has more flexibility to deal with those folks that aren't in a collective bargaining circumstance or don't have independent uh, contracts. I, I think if that answers your question. So, so generally, yeah, our insurance is generally the same. Um, when the board tries to negotiate with um, the unions to say, we worked over the years to have more contributions, you don't have to have necessarily the same negotiations with non-union. You can implement those as a board policy decision, and the board has over the years. So there are some differences there. In general, when it comes to the wages, um, the non-union folks have lagged behind the way that unions have been treated historically in this town. Frankly, that's how, over the years, one of the so-called, you know, the Teamster Union came to pass. It was a group of non-union folks who felt that they were being treated less fairly than the unions were and organized themselves. And it was for years referred to as sort of the non-union union. So as a global thing that, that has existed in the past. One of the reasons that this is here is to give the board more options to look at it in a comprehensive manner rather than just have that one issue that the board constantly struggles with. It is a snapshot to see how you compare. It is important to be competitive. We have lost employees that move on for financial reasons. We Absolutely. struggle to hire employees on the lower end of the wage scale. We're doing that at Public Works right now, struggling to get laborers to work in the Public Works Department, probably one of our most understaffed agencies in the town. So pay is important especially at this time in a very strong job market um, where unemployment is extremely low. So these are complicated factors that the board can consider. We, we're not asking you to make decisions tonight. Again, this is the presentation of this work. We'll get more feedback both from our employees and I'm sure you will from the community. And then we can make reasoned decisions on where the board wishes to go. Gina, you had something? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that pretty much what you just said. I mean, we're getting to a point right now where we do have a lot of people leaving because of retirements and things like that. Jo unemployment is very low and, you know, we need to make sure that we continue being able to carry out the tasks that Hampton has. And Hampton does have a lot of different tasks going on and our departments are overloaded all the time because of different reasons that other communities don't have. So that's why it's very hard to compare us to other communities, but at the same time, you need to like have something, you know, we, that you can look at so you can see what are other communities in New Hampshire doing right now that may have similar situations going on. So that's all. Just one more quick final. Uh, we're having problems getting um, replacements for the tough jobs that Public Works does because people don't want to work with their hands and put sweat equity into their jobs anymore. They want to sit there with their little tinkering uh, uh, machinery. So it's not so much as the pay. People don't want to get their hands dirty anymore. That may well be true. And that Public well Works is a very yeah. tough it is. job. I, that's society, though, at this point in time and, and those that are out there. And there are I think I think this job study is very well done. Uh, I have no problem with Portsmouth being included because I feel that but at least 10 to 12 weeks out of the year, we are bigger than they are. And we have some issues that we have to deal with with that. So you need that. As far as Portsmouth being a city, looking on there, there's five or six of those that are cities that have a city form of a government. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so being a city or being a town, that, that didn't affect me at all. I, what I saw was that we, we actually have some towns that are comparable, whether they're cities or towns, comparable to our size. You have some that are smaller, and we have a, some that are bigger. But it's comparable to what we have. The important thing we have is we have a scale now. We have a place to put people in. So you can have a pay range, which is something we didn't have before. This is just a tool in the toolbox. That's right. It's not what we're going to do. It's a tool in the toolbox, which is what we're going to use. So, I, uh, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to say that, that it's a tool in the toolbox, but the jobs are market driven, and and there. Are, I, I was down with Chris and Jen last week when they were digging those holes, and there were a lot of people that didn't mind getting their hands dirty, and they were working pretty dirty down there, and they were doing it. So there are still people that will get a job like that. But I think it's, it's our responsibility 
that the town's getting their value out of the employees mm -hmm. and the employee's getting value out of his job and that an employee knows that if he comes to work at Hampton he can move on he's not just getting a cost of living that he can yeah. move up but there's a reason why they move up there's a structure it's not simply willy-nilly oh we're gonna give it this year we're not gonna give it next year it, it, it's this, this, this is a start to that a good start I would just like to say that I think Portsmouth has just as many tourists as Hampton does. Go to Market Square Day, you'll see more of them come to Hampton Beach. Loud and clear. Yeah. If you don't like Portsmouth in the mix, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> so right as of, around there. Yes, sir. So we have this report. What would you like us to do now with Mr. Mitchell? Just fine. You need to make a decision. I believe, first of all, you need to make a decision on that point that, that Rick brought up. You want to include Portsmouth or do you not want to include Portsmouth? I think that's a valid question. I think it's a question you should just make a decision on right we'll make now. Make a motion because not to include Portsmouth. Okay. All right. We have a second. I'll second it for him. Any discussion? I would just like to say that Portsmouth has a huge amount of tourists year round. They're building all these different parking lots. They just the city of Portsmouth just paid twelve million dollars uh, for the parking lot lot, not for the parking facility. I'd say that we all hear about them spending $17 million for the Coakley landfill. There's these huge amounts of money. There's big decisions made there that the city of Portsmouth has that we're not involved like they are. They have the, the port coming in there. There's huge business coming in there. There's all kinds of money made there that's not made here in Hampton. So I don't think it has anything in common with Hampton. I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. So yeah. it's easy enough to, to strike that out of a, an averages and see yeah. what it does to the spreadsheet. Well, do that's we have very a consensus to, to scratch it out? No, I don't think it makes any difference at all. We had a motion. We had a second. Second. All those in favor? Well, are you in favor? No, or? I'm not. You're in favor of his motion? No. You said you were when we were talking about it. To take well, Portsmouth I agreed out. with you in Portsmouth, but we've had discussions since then. I'm, okay. I'm well, it's not. it's three and then three, against. Two. Yeah. two against. Three, three so it passes. Thank so you. we'll take. We'll present that proof. We'll take. Very good. I have so, a question. Yep. Is this going to be made public now or not? Absolutely. Okay. I, I mean, cool. that, that, unless the board says otherwise, it's a public yeah, document. Yeah, absolutely. Document. Yeah, it's it a public document. Yeah, absolutely. I intend to circulate it. Yeah. Yeah, we just have to break it down to scan and have electronic. We can do that. Shouldn't be a problem at all. And just take parts <laughs> out of the mix. And yeah, we'll have to recalculate that spreadsheet, but that shouldn't yeah. be terribly yeah, I difficult. think that will, give the, will make the public to be more on board. Sure. Mr. Chairman, may we set a specific date before we get to November <laughs> to sit down and discuss the actual Why don't we take that up on your old business? we got Bob Ladd now for yeah, the yeah. Why don't, oh. yeah, we'll, we'll do oh, that. Yeah. All so right. We'll talk about that. Pull that so. out and send you the sheet. Yeah, that'd be great. And then you can determine which one to sure. include. Okay, thank you. thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. We Good luck it. to you. Next one up is Bob Ladd. Bob wants to talk about the formation of an emergency management committee. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hi, Bob. Thanks for letting me speak. And my opening comment is I'm not from Portsmouth. <laughs> You're from Massachusetts. <laughs> Portsmouth South. <laughs> uh, tonight I'd like to address an issue which coincidentally the appointment following this appointment addresses the other most significant issue the town will face. Yeah. Yep. The solutions of the wastewater treatment plant, the sewer pipes that lead to it, and sea level rise. They both will have an enormous impact on the outcome of the community as a community. The thing that got me interested in this issue was the State Sea Level Rise Commission initial report where the climatologist, Mr. Ward from the University of New Hampshire, basically said, abandon the beach stop development and leave over a period of time. That didn't seem like something that made much sense to anyone or anything we would go to at this point. The second report that influenced me was the Rockingham Planning Commission, which said there's in excess of a billion dollars worth of assessed valuation in the town at risk going forward due to projected potential sea level rise. So that led me to believe we were at a point where maybe we should be doing things to anticipate periods of time that aren't next year or next week. So I thought the creation of an emergency management committee could be beneficial in this regard. This is a town with lots of untapped talent. 
And if you create a committee like this, you could invite onto it people, and I have been informed that there are people in this town who are emergency management managers in their career tracks. Uh, and talking to the police chief, he's on board with this. He doesn't have a problem with creating a committee. In fact, he was kind of in favor of it because he thought the grant component alone was beyond what he had the ability to handle at this time. A committee could also, in many ways, advise you on the flooding and drainage re studies that are going on now when they come to the town for consideration. You'd have someone to kind of filter them for you with hopefully the expertise to make good reports to you. And this would be at no cost to the town at this time. It would be an internal review but by very common people. Now for some very specific examples. We do not have any evacuation signs. Going back as far as the 1950s, these were common signs throughout the East. In fact, at that time, Dr. Nkava was the absurd mm -hmm. conclusion to nuclear war to protect your saltine crackers were being stored in subway tunnels. <laughs> uh, there were signs, which led me we, some, that's not a complicated thing to do. And in conjunction with evacuation signs, a review of an evacuation policy seemed appropriate. And going a little further down that street and reviewing an evacuation policy, a decision could be made as to whether or not you should have a pre-planned known evacuation center, which would not be obviously in the floodplain. If that were determined to be desirable, then you should plan on stocking it to take into account the needs of people that might have to be evacuated to it. Then I thought a little further into this. There are a lot of unknown, unanticipated consequences. If we were discussing this two years ago, I said the school system would now have to take into account flooding as it takes into account snow days to, to project its school calendar year, you'd say that's silly. If I said the town would be placing very expensive equipment in the fire department at risk trying to protect people during these events, you'd say that has never happened before. These are the kinds and sorts of things that are now happening this year has given us all kinds of weather alerts as to what's probably coming going forward. Another benefit I would think of a committee is the Civil Sea Level Rise Commission mentioned that while only 11% of the population in the state of New Hampshire was from Dover to Seabrook, which is in the floodplain area they were reviewing 25% of the gross domestic product of the state is in the same area. So a formation of a committee which could then start to become in contact with these other communities and cross filter ideas and cross pollinate them and bring them back to you for review and consideration. I just think it, it's, it's worth considering. I think it's a town that the last thing you do is give up on continuing to have this town. If the projections were accurate financially, I'm not sure what state the town could be in going for. You can't lose or expose one third of the total assets value of the town to sea level rise and continue to have a town in the way we now know it. But these are things that are way out over the horizon. But the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and I just think this might be something for you folks to consider at this time. I said my said. Questions from the board, Mary Louise? Well, first of all, let me, let's hear from the town manager. If you've got anything on. Well. I'd like to have emergency evacuation signs too, but state law prohibits us from putting them up because they're on state highways 
And if we do, we've already been told they're going to be taken down because they're unlawful to put up. And we can't seem to convince the state to spend the 20 cents that they need to do it to put the bloody things up. But I, I don't want to put them up and have them pulled down. This um, might be a good place to have a committee talk to the state on behalf of the yeah. town. Well, to, to do that. this, you've got to change the state law. We, we've talked to the state and they're not in favor of doing that. Yeah. They want to have control of it. They would like to charge us for the signs, for the maintenance, for the upkeep, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. It's one of those things that sort of drags itself across the, uh, we could, it would be wonderful if the legislature could turn around and say, hey, guys, get over it. Get something done, which I think needs to happen. I don't disagree with you there. Um, I would hope that uh, we do not include the projects that are underway in the Department of Public Works, because if we do, I don't want to assign those to a committee, otherwise Public Works doesn't need to do them because they're going to have to report to committees mm -hmm. and give reports, yeah. get permissions, and then come yeah. back to the selectmen and so forth. It doesn't work well. Uh, we need help, yes, I agree. Uh, but when the town meeting votes something to uh, go ahead and construct it or do engineering work on it, it just needs to get done. And assigning that to a committee is probably not the best way to do that. We could use some help in other areas by, uh, by a committee in addressing things with individuals who live in those areas that need to be studied and things need to be done. So the committee could be a great help there. Um, the thing I think that most people don't understand, and, and this has to be changed by the state too, uh, to some degree, is that when there is an emergency, no one in this town controls the emergency management director. Only the state does. Mm. And it doesn't matter who in the town wants to control the emergency management director or have him do something, the state gives him his orders and he has to respond to those only. And he's the chief of police, right? And he is also the chief of police in our particular case. He doesn't have to be, but he also is. Mm. Um, I think that's something we can all work on to help fix and correct and get things done. We do need better cooperation between all the governmental units. And I think a committee could help in that respect, particularly with the state, the county, and, and, and the towns that are involved, because our abutters are, our abutting towns are deeply involved in this, as you point out. The seacoast is mm -hmm. one big yep. community, and yep. we're all going to take water, and we need to get that water handled somehow. Um, and right now, everybody's doing it alone, and I don't think that's the way to do it. Right. So I, I'm not, it's not that I'm not in favor of the committee. I just think there should be certain things that the committee doesn't do and certain mm -hmm. things the committee yep. does do define their area of exactly so we don't have yeah. cross purposes at some point in time yeah. get Regina. the job done Regina yeah I I think that yeah whatever Fred thinks about the committee is fine <laughs> but I think that what you're talking about is exactly what Fred just said too and I talked to you earlier today about how if I know I've been I'm on a uh, commission seacoast long-term goals and objectives oh, yeah. for drinking water yeah. and Tim Roach from the Rockingham Planning Commission is on that. And he's new new director. He's been like a year or so as a director. And he's working on ideas on trying to get like with deep with sea level rising, flooding, whatever you want to call it, it's happening. And uh, on getting the coastal communities more working together. Because, you know, they're all going through the same thing. I mean, regionally we're all going through the same thing. The whole country is really. But you know, if we could start working on that, maybe. I know that the Planning Commission, I've met with him a couple of times. He's a great guy, the, the, director, the director, and he has yeah. some really good ideas. And I know we have two commissioners appointed yeah. from Hampton. But, I mean, I've been a selectman now. This is my third year. I mean, I've never gotten anything on what's going on from that Planning Commission from them. So maybe this could be a way, too, to maybe open up those lines of communication. Because I said to Tim, I'm like, we have two commissioners from Hampton, but... I've been, a, you know, I haven't received anything out of selectmen yeah. on what's going on, what you guys are working on. And I mean, that's like, they're all into this. This is what they're doing now, you know, with everything True. that's going on. They're already, they've probably already done True. most of the work that we need to have done here in different areas. So we can all work together on it. And I know now the town just approved to have the study done. So, I mean, this is the time, I think, like Bob's saying, to maybe just start taking a few steps toward, uh, working on the problem is eventually gonna just keep getting worse, most likely. Fred stole my thunder. I was gonna talk about those evacuation signs, which the stupid state won't allow. Uh, one other thing to consider, um, the 
school district mm. several years back was told that they have to have 90 seat school buses, which are more expensive than the school buses we used to have because of, if there was an evacuation, those school buses would be put to use to help take people uh, away. The buses with 90 seats on them are half empty now because dad and mom are driving the kids to school, but nevertheless, they're forcing the school district to pay to rent 90 seat school buses. So you'll be able to have the school buses drive you out of town. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> just to throw this out there while she was just talking about it, I recently talked to a teacher and she said that part of the evacuation plan for the school are to have those school buses and they're supposed to take students in the, in the event of some problem with uh, Seabrook or whatever. The spot. I thought she said to take them to Stratum or Exeter yeah. or somewhere yeah, like that. But, we, you know, with the teachers on the bus, she told me there's no way any of the teachers are going to be going over to Exeter or Stratum with the students or without them because they're going to run home and take care of their own families. You know, so stuff like that <laughs> makes no sense. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, there's, there, there's no support amongst the people working at the school because they're going to go home and get their own kids. And they're going to grab their own kids and go where they want to go. But, so there's a lot of things that really do have to be looked at. I'll be the first one to say that. But if we are to do something like this, and I think tonight we should just take this into consideration, I think that there should be uh, like a member from the Board of Selectmen, a member from the Hampton Beach Area Commission, a member from the Village District, a member from the Planning Board, and then who are the other people that want to volunteer? Uh, I'd like to actually, it, I know it, sound, it sounds terrible, but I would rather see, let's see some names of people that are willing to come forward and put their name uh, forward to take part of this and to make it something bigger and better. I don't think we need more of the usual suspects. Yeah, yeah I think Bob come up, came up here with a good idea, and I think Bob came up here with the idea of what can we do, not what can't we do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the important thing. And who can we get to help us do what we can do and not worry so much about what we can't do. But I think structuring it, and I think Bob's already talked to, to Richie Sawyer, and I think if you, know, if you go back and talk with him and, and bring back an outline of something or a structure of what kind of committee it would be and what kind of things they'd work on, I think it's important. I think it's important that we're proactive, mm -hmm. that we're not reactive. Right now, we, we, we ended up being reactive because we haven't been proactive in the past, and we need to be proactive. And I think Bob, that's what Bob's saying. He's saying, let's be proactive. Let's do okay. something. Let's I get something rolling. I feel proactive, too. So, so I'm let's, not against it. No, I know you're not against so it. So what, I think. what would you like to see? I would like to see Bob come back with an outline. Uh, Maybe work with Richie. Because uh, Richie's the manager. Yeah, we need and this. with the town manager. Yeah, we, well, if it's going to be a commission, right? Because we want to make sure we're not overstepping. I mean, yeah. I know the chief's been in a couple times. And it sounds like he would like to have some of the pressure you know, alleviated. Yeah, oh, I sure. mean, he's yeah. already has a... Yeah. Why don't we so start with maybe the we state? can have some new people that are out there, people like you mentioned, people that are qualified to do this. If they could come forward and give us, uh, you know, somebody that we could look, you know, look at in a real positive manner that has something to contribute, like yourself. You're perfect for the job. Ah, <laughs> I nominate you. Uh, 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 <laughs> that was the fault of the Army. <laughs> so there's a lot of people just like you, Bob. And I know that for years, because I've known you a long time, that uh, I tried to get you to take part in town stuff. And now you do it. You seem to love it. And I'm all for more people like you to come forward. I think we should have Bob leave with a positive message that Absolutely. he can work Absolutely. with and, and get this thing rolling. That we'll continue to look at it. We'll continue to work on it. Why don't you go out and talk to the chief, see what you can, maybe some, talk to the town manager, see what's something that, so you can actually see what this committee would look like. Mm -hmm. Would it be preferable if the town manager set it up with the chief and I would attend whatever? We could do that. That, that, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Maybe we can finally solve one problem that drives us all crazy. And that is the state refuses, absolutely refuses, to put a facility in this town during an emergency. Mm -hmm. They will not do that. And they will not authorize any money or any material to us. Yeah. That's crazy. So why don't we start with the state and petitioning the state? Well, we all need to work together. We need to work together. We need yeah. not just, it's not fighting with the state. We no. need to work together. Well, so, the state's the problem. Uh, he will set up an appointment between yeah. you and him and the yeah. police chief. 
right? And so we can look at it. So we can make and, and we'll move forward and then we'll bring it back a couple of weeks, a yep. month, so whenever we see what you mm -hmm. got. Maybe even have a guideline of some standards about who would be the type of people. What you know, how what qualifications do they need to have to, to come forward and be a person for this job? The chief had mentioned specific people he knew who he felt would be good for it. Okay. So I don't want to take up any more of your time. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thanks Sorry, Bob. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Thank you for bringing it forward. His wife is texting him and telling him she wants him home. <laughs> Get off the road. <laughs> I think I'll go up to Portsmouth now. <laughs> Chris Jacobs, Jen Hale from our DPW department. Just fine. Good How are you? Evening. I already oh, saw wow. it. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, yes, unfortunately. Wow, look at that. They look a little cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> they don't smell as bad either. Well, I'm not going to take any chances tonight. I'm putting on gloves. <laughs> you can't get away with the smell. Um, why don't you go ahead? You okay. Summarize. I will um, basically just for everybody at home uh, that is listening and paying attention, we were able to successfully. Uh, repair the ductile iron force main across the marsh last Monday and Tuesday. Uh, we began the process Monday working to set up the mat. We set up a bridge. Uh, we had a little uh, trouble that night. One of the trucks bringing in the second half of the bridge broke down, but it got here first thing, or they unloaded it first thing Tuesday morning. The bridge was built. The mats were put down and uh, we started. Uh, we had a great crew out there. We were able to get to the pipe by about noontime on Tuesday. We found the hole. Uh, it was another hole in the pipe. This time the hole was on the side of the ductile iron pipe. Uh, we cut out that piece of pipe. Um, this time we did a video inspection and a jetting, which is a cleaning of it. We did the cleaning first and then a video inspection, about 200 feet in each direction. Uh, to see what we could see. And after that was done, we took the new 14-inch ductile pipe, the two sleeves, and we were uh, able to successfully make the repair. A uh, lot of questions as to what he's doing over here, but <laughs> more what, uh, what happened. Why, why did this pipe fail? We don't have those answers tonight. Uh, we, we don't know the answer. We are working with the third party engineer. We took soil samples uh, right around the pipe, so they'll be testing for all the um, corrosivity, the pH, all the standard things of a salt environment. Uh, we also cut off a section of the pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, we cut it into a coupon sample that will be sent out, uh, and that will be tested. It will go through actual material testing elongation for the characteristics. Mm -hmm. This becomes more important uh, as looking to the engineers for how, but once the pipe, that section that was removed with the hole in it was taken, you know, off the marsh and back as we were taking the mats off and leaving, it was um, quite the observation to see this pipe that you could literally pick up I'm scared, but not that scared. Um, oh, the other one. <laughs> yeah, the other ones are icky. Uh, this is a piece of the actual ductile iron pipe. And I don't have more of it right now, but the fact that I can literally break the ductile iron pipe in half wow. um, as it's coming off, it's, something's not right. There's corrosion going on. Um, from what exactly, how, what caused it, those are the answers I do not have. But this is just evident of having, you know, that tide Mill Creek brackish water, salt water sitting uh, on this pipe. Uh, it does have a liner. Generally, it's wrapped in to sort of protect it. But that liner wasn't there right where that hole was. Not saying it was never there. It was not there, you know, because there was a hole in the pipe. Mm. Um, when you looked back, 
these pipes are ductile iron to start, but they have a bituminous or a black coating uh, on the outside of it. Again, that's for protection, mm -hmm. corrosion protection. And on the inside, it's a cement lining. Mm -hmm. yeah. When this was breaking off, and in some of the pictures that you have, you can see the sharp looking tooth. That piece is just the cement lining. That was all that was left. Mm. Not the pipe, not the coating. Um, so that's a little bit of uh, how the process went. It did go very smoothly. Um, again, very grateful for the team that we put together and everybody that stopped by and came out and gave us our support because it was not fun. It's cold. Um, and for the hardworking guys that are out there, that is their job, and they did a great job. Just real quick, in front of Chris, and um, he's ready to go a little more, is I mentioned that we jetted or cleaned the pipes. Nice picture of that on the screen. The screen angle. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Um, basically, the water gets thrown up the pipe, and it's meant to move everything out of it so we could put the camera in. Yeah. When the water went up and what came down, you know, if you thought it was all clogged or everything was gooky, you would expect this stuff to just gooky being a technical term in case anybody yeah. felt that. Um, just a lot of stuff coming out of the pipe constantly if it were completely full or something was wrong. Nope, instead we get rocks. These are the ones that I found outside of the pipe in the general vicinity of the break. Yeah. Them and themselves were not, you know, indicative of, if you will, cause or failure of the pipe. They were just, they were there. But they were the biggest ones that were there. Because the question is going to come up, you know, were there any stones? These, when we jetted, came out of the pipe. You can see. Yeah, stuff on them. They're actually stained much darker than the ones that are outside because yeah. the sludge that's in the pipe is just that, a lot darker. <laughs> um, a couple of them are. This is a actually calcified junk. It's got some of the pea stone in it, but it's also got some of the calcified sludge that was on the bottom. Yeah. I mean, this just came out as one big chunk. Um, do they smell? Yeah, they smell of effluent. Um, there was like 17 in all. Wow. Um, I could have got a few more, but, you know, at what point do you stop? These were in the pipe between where the brake was and the pump station, meaning that they were pushed into this location. Where they come from, I don't know, um, because the pump impellers for the old pumps and the new pumps would not allow, would have not allowed any of these stones by. Besides that, none of them are, um, you take this one, it's got a little bit of iron deposit on it. Um, they're not scarred like they, they would have been scarred if they had tried to make it around the pump impellers. Um, so obviously they came into the pipe from some other location we jetted up 200 feet each direction and I think the camera made it 164 feet before it went back underwater um, they got into the pipe somehow um, logic dictates to me that there's another hole somewhere um, but I don't ha we don't have any visual proof of that at all no visual proof that there's another hole, but also when I say we put this line back together and repaired, we also did pressure test it, and it is holding. <coughs> but understand it held two years ago, too. It's, it yeah. held on February 28th, yeah. the same pipe. So. Anything else? You got any further you want to go before we start asking the question from the board? I, I think the point is um, because of this, this amount of deterioration is, um, I mean, it's, it's easier to break than a chocolate chip cookie. Um, we've got to do something. Um, that's, that's all I can say. I, I don't have a question. I have a little information that I don't know if it's caught up with you. Um, you're familiar with the line, the ductile iron pipe that Aquarian is replacing on Mill Road? They found yeah. the same thing that you've got in the sewer line, in their water line. Yep. Have you checked, have they called you or have you? No. You might want to check with them. What's the same thing? They found a hole in the deck tile iron pipe just like what you're telling us you found in the sewer pipe. So you're, 
you said the same thing. You're not, are you talking about the rocks or what? Well, that, that's the, the, I wasn't on site, but I understand that they're, they're finding the same thing in the Mill Road water line hmm. that you have found and the same type of damage. So you might want to check with Carl and cool. see what they've come up with. Okay. Regina, you have any questions? Um, I have no questions, but so this time when you went down to the pipe, how much of the pipe did you actually get to look at? It, we unearthed the same exact section as we did last time. Mm -hmm. So if you can picture it and... 10, 11 feet long, yeah, as it, long as the box trench. The itself. trench box itself. Yeah. And that, co I mean, I saw a piece of that pipe earlier today in your office, and I broke it with just like that. <laughs> um, that's something that it's probably been like that. I mean, the, that amount of corrosiveness... It's not something that probably just happens, like you said. I don't think it happens overnight, but I'm going to let the professionals that right. we're hired. Right, we have to wait for to, that. To, for them to tell us that, you know, in a saltwater environment, this would have occurred over mm. X days, months, or years. Right. And there's a big, you know, it, the corrosion happening versus the failure can be two different sentences. Mm -hmm. It can take that last jab rock hitting it just the right way if yeah. rocks are in here moving yeah. with right. the flow or anything right. like that to cause the failure yeah. but no I, I from a professional standpoint that type of corrosion doesn't happen overnight yeah right and the fact that we can't see the pipe until we do something like this yeah. anywhere well we saw internally 400 feet of it um we didn't oh, yeah. observe Put another you know uh, missing piece mm -hmm. the camera when it goes down can actually rotate up and actually Good. it's like a owl's head and rotate mm -hmm. in all directions the only thing we did notice in the video tape and um selectman waddell and selectman bridal were there is there was um on the upper half of the pipe and it's probably due to sewer gases a normal um function uh the best way i can describe it is like it's uh, acne or calcification oh. there was a number of white spots or dots in the pipe um, that the camera would see. And they look white dust because understand it's a, it's not really a color environment, it's a black and white yeah. environment. Um, but two of the, one of the spots of calcification was really amazing in that it had literally grabbed itself or embedded itself around a straw, a plastic straw. Oh my God. And the straw was like waving, if you will, <laughs> as water would go by it. So the okay. calcification was thick enough on the inside of the pipe to actually entomb this plastic wow. straw forever. Oh my God. Um, another section had uh, strings uh, attached to it. We thought it was a crack, but it was actually, the crack kept moving. It was a string wow. and we got pushed some water against it. Good so um, there's some interior degradation of the pipe itself, mm. um, indicative of its number of years of usage in the environment you know that it, the fact that it handles um, wastewater sulfur gas can be very corrosive mm. you saw that to what it does in the plant you add it with oxygen and look at what it does to the things within the plant mm -hmm. um, so yes there's obviously you know it's it's this is an aged pipe mm. Rick? yeah well um so you feel you were going to get some of these answers through people that are doing an analysis that we've hired. So I think that's going to be very valuable. Why was there no liner in this particular part? Don't know. Don't know. It looked yeah. to me like it had been pushed back. Yeah. It, uh, one of the photos, I don't know which one was up, um, you could actually see like excess liner. Mm -hmm rolled up rolled up or pushed I'd back. I'd like to see that analysis it answer, yeah. you know contribute to the answer to that question yeah. um, and you know like Mary Louise just said uh, maybe it would be valuable to ask something about what's happening there at Aquarian are all pipes you know my this is under the marsh but something tells me that when you're going down Ocean Boulevard in many of the areas, it's not a lot different than the marsh, yeah. uh, particularly in everybody's houses, because they are on the marsh. Mm -hmm. Everybody's houses are uh, having these same issues with yeah. these pipes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, why aren't we having more of a, 
you know, maybe other issues, or maybe we are having other issues. Maybe some of these other pipes are having, you know, I'm not saying that we don't need to fix this, but how big is this problem? Maybe all the pipes are that having these problems. Um, I think we have to take a look at it. And, you know, as far as the calcification goes, we all, anyone that has gallbladder stones, they have calcifications right in their bodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that's what happens when they take them out. You know, in your own body, you make calcifications. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I don't think it's unusual that there's calcifications inside those pipes. I don't, I don't think no. that's a big deal at no, all. Just, just say it's uh, indicative of the age of a pipe. Yeah. And hey, the same gases are in the humans as are in those pipes. <laughs> so I mean, this happens all the time uh, to you know to all yeah. of us. Just so. um, to add to that, Rick, the um, third-party review company Weston and Sampson is going to be working with DIFRA, which is the Ductile Iron Pipe Research Association, specifically oh. on this pipe, its environment. Because as you can imagine, someone who does research for a living is going to find this of interest of, well, why did this pipe succeed or why did this pipe fail? And from an aquarium standpoint, you know, not knowing any of the circumstances there, mm -hmm. the pipes are rated and have a lifetime yeah. based on their environment. And if you were to go on the DIPRA website now, you would see five categories. And they will tell you uh, for where you want to use, like when you use ductile iron pipe. And I'll give you one guess of where salt marsh fell. Mm -hmm. It was the last well, one. We, we, you we know, need to but they want to know that. They want to see those reactions. So having them involved with what we find out hopefully will provide us better Maybe answers. Maybe will provide us answers because my guess is that these same ductile uh, pipes are all over the place down. And they hit groundwater. Because they hit they're into people's water. yards. They're into yeah. people's properties. I know that when we did the uh, work, what is it, 14 years ago now, Mr. Welch? There must have been all kinds of ductile uh, pipes and clay pipes uh, that we have replaced, right? We've replaced a lot of older pipe, and some yeah. of it's been ductile, some of it's been asbestos concrete, some of it's been clay. Mm -hmm. And remember when they put that water pipe on Ocean Boulevard up higher, because that was higher land probably, and there probably was dirt along there. But that pipe there was 100 years old. You remember that, Mary Louise? Because yes, I remember you talking company. about the water company. That was a water pipe. That was a water pipe. Yep. Uh, and maybe that, you know, my guess is that they probably put it where they put it because it was more soil there mm -hmm. versus, again, all of those houses and properties along there are on the same exact type of peat that these pipes are in. Yeah, that's Everybody right. Everybody that lives there, they're all on peat. Yeah. That's why the land's sinking, and that's why people need to, in some cases, put mm -hmm. some fill in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That line was sure. right at Boar's Head. Yeah, it was right there. But that's, it was, there was earth there. Mm -hmm. What I found was interesting, you said something needs to be done. You said yeah. that the, the, the pipe has deteriorated. I mean, you, without even knowing the cause per se, uh -huh. you said the pipe has deteriorated. Jennifer and I were talking right after we came out of the marsh. And she, you know, there's probably anywhere from 30 to 600 causes to, that are currently affecting that section of pipe mm. from corrosive soils to contact with salt water to sewer gases to stones having been laid under the first you know that that la the previous so there's there's a number of factors uh, I don't think there's any with a pipe that long 3,400 feet long there's several causes mm -hmm. but it's obvious to us that this pipe is reaching or has reached really has reached its useful life. Um, something needs to be done. And the other I, thing is, I think it's... You need that pipe in the summer, right? In the summer and during the high storm events that we had uh, due to the flooding, um, things get inundated. We're still taking in a good amount of seawater. We use both pipes. Um, so something needs to occur. Um, I think we need to look at, or we would request that you look at, the, the funding possibility of moving this along before we have such a catastrophic failure that we can't repair the pipe or it's just unfeasible to repair it. Um, that day is, is coming. I, I couldn't have predicted that two years to the month that this thing was going to break again. 
if it continues to break, um, how many times do you do you want us, as the Board of Selectmen, as the citizens, to march out in the marsh and, and repair it? Yeah. So when is this analysis coming? So they're looking, it can be anywhere from four to six weeks um, by the time they get the test results back and then they do their own research. They'll not only be doing these testings, but they intend to reach out to Aquarian, they tend to reach out to Unitil, look around the surroundings, have any of the other utilities had similar repetitive failures uh, in the air, those type of things uh, that they'll look at. So they'll have those reports, but I think to add on to what Chris was saying is that from our standpoint, in a matter of 24 hours after taking that deep breath, okay, it's been fixed, and then going the next day and getting to really study the what's left of the pipe, it's quite the eye-opener that, all right, let's make sure our ducks are in a row. You know, we've redone the uh, company's quote to do the emergency piping. Summer is, you wouldn't know it by today or yesterday, but summer is upon us, you know, in a matter of a month yeah. or so when the weather starts getting warmer and uh, as Chris just said or and Jim if, if that pipe fails this is the emergency plan because we need analysis. to yeah. are we of course we are yeah. we need to listen to it first what, what, what? well I think it's good to have an emergency plan in place it's no different yeah. than what we were just talking about Absolutely. and without this emergency plan I agree we don't have a backup What's so the this is that, Jim? this emergency plan uh, includes probably about a hundred thousand dollars worth of setup this is very similar than two years ago the prices haven't changed that much uh, they've gotten a little more refined actually each time we do this you know they're coming in we're showing them pump station valves where we're gonna do some pits and then you have a rental fee of about uh, thirteen thousand dollars a week uh, for the pipes to wow. be up and going eight hundred seventy five thousand um, to a million dollars a year okay for, and, for the emergency plan, yes. And that does not include, and I, and I say this because each plan, you know, has this very much excluded. Our workforce will be doing that. They won't be, I mean, they'll need six of our staff. So if it's not our staff and we'll need supervision watching it 20, you know, having some kind of security because this is going to be on the side of a road 24-7. So there's just, these are ballpark. I don't want, these are this company's cost to put the pipe out there and all the valves and pits mm -hmm. but we have a lot of departmental costs that would go with this uh, to implement it and that is the emergency plan that that's what would happen if we needed it and we're trying to think ahead because much like I, uh, we mentioned in the memo this isn't the only thing we need to think ahead about if and when we need to replace these pipes and I feel the if has been answered the question now is when we still need to have agreements with the state on a temporary basis for the emergency plan right. as well as on a permanent basis if we're going to put the road in there and the last one I worked on took about seven eight months not to say this one would but why would we want to put ourselves in that same position we need to be talking to the state now that is the last of our permits we have a wetland permit we have you know our Army Corps permit why not have the confidence to move forward and talk to the state on when are you going to allow us to construct if you're not going to let us to be on the road in the winter well we need to start talking how that works because we need the pipe for summer so just in, in uh, you can put any year after it i'm just saying mm -hmm. what are our constraints going to be and then on top of that we do need one easement from a private landowner yeah. why not have that easement written and ready to be recorded if not recorded i don't know if you record easements unless you need them but it can be written and you know both parties already done and then the third part I mean this goes to I hear what Rick's saying let's wait and see what the professionals say but to do this project takes funding and at this time we have no funding Rusty I have a quick oh. uh, Fred sure you had given us a whole thing on, on on a special town meeting and stuff can you explain? I've already updated it we're looking at November to December if you uh, request it now and that's only if the court is willing to decrease some of the time limits so so, so you're looking at the annual town meeting okay so what are we what are we saying Why here did it change? I mean, what are we saying what do you need to, to start that stuff well I need a recommendation from this board to authorize us or an authorization from this board to start negotiations with the state for both the terminate but terminate 
temporary piping and the permanent piping. I mean, that one is a tell us, go ahead and do it, and we can do that. That's our work office time with uh, Attorney Gerald and the town manager, and then we'd come back to this board once we have <coughs> reached the agreement for acceptance. I don't understand why you don't want to hear the analysis. Because well, we would need this in an emergency. We don't even have that in place. And we, we are going to wait for the analysis to, to find out exactly what it is. But the bottom line Oh, yeah, is to go. To move. Before we move, to move forward. forward with any funding. But right, right now, we've had one failure, and it was some people's belief that that was the only one we were going to have, and lo and behold, within mm -hmm. two years, we've had a second failure. Right. I don't want to wait till we have a third failure to say we should be we should be working at getting it done. I think we should start the process to see what it is. We're not spending really any money to do anything, but we're starting the process to make sure that we're able to do it if we have to. And that is where I was saying it's not something, this is work that, you know, the director and myself and other town, you know, people would do. This is not the engineers. We have all that. That stuff is done. Make a motion that we go with their suggestion, with their recommendations. Just making the motion so we open it for discussion. Second. Okay, I'll second it. Okay. And um, also I just want to say a couple things. This pipe's leaked twice in two years. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll wait for the analysis to find out how the problem happened. But that doesn't take away the fact that the problem's still there. The pipe, and yeah, Rick, it may be every single pipe in town may be doing the same thing, but every single pipe in town doesn't take you know what from Hampton <laughs> Beach, which is gonna be starting in what, six <laughs> weeks? Yeah. And we're lucky that we don't have an 80 degree day in April because, you yeah. know, we yeah. might we don't have to worry about using <laughs> that pipe. But do you does anyone think that that pipe is sustainable for the foreseeable future because I don't and I'm not sold that it ever will be until it's accessible to our public works department so that they can see it I've and lost, I thought that the first time it failed mm -hmm. but not everyone did and it didn't pass town meeting and so now we have a situation that we have to deal with you need to get everything that you need from That's the states the easements whatever whatever you just said I agree Jim 100% with your motion but at the same time I would like to talk to whoever town manager of public works thinks would be the pre people to talk to and communicate in a formal but informal basis as a selectman, maybe the town manager, the chairman, public works, people from the attorney general's office, people from Department of Environmental Services. We want the same thing for you. We don't want, you know, we want a pipe that we can rely on but you know what, we're not the only ones relying on it either. So it would be a lot better if everyone got together, business owners, everyone, listen, this is what we gotta do. If this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. I'm sorry, but I mean, I just broke that pipe in my hands. And I mean, people are talking about whether or not it's gotta be replaced. It needs to be replaced. If you want the people to vote for it, you need the analysis. We're gonna get Where we the get analysis. the experts, because yeah. I don't think that you're an expert, Regina. I'm not you saying I am. You can probably turn that, you can break that pipe just like you break a candy bar. But we wanna hear what the experts say. Who's saying you're, that Nothing's gonna happen to the voters. They're not gonna vote for this until they hear from the experts. You're not I'm an the, expert. Who's saying I am? Will you I'm let me talk? Not. I was elected I'm to this board just like you. I deserve okay, to talk so just as much as you. You can say what you want, you. but we want to hear from the experts. Right. So, uh, no Before one's saying that they don't. No I want to agree to what they want is what I'm saying. That's yeah, why I, I seconded Jim's motion. I want to hear Jim's from the all right, well, so do we all. Who's saying we don't? Regina, you've been all over the paper right. talking about all it. Right. You're yeah. not an expert. Back on track yet, I never said I, I was. a quick question. Please, yeah, I was not. in the paper because I knew you would be. Quick question, all right. Um, how long will the state of New Hampshire allow us to run a temporary line above ground on 101? We don't Can't know. Can't answer that question. Because we've okay. never asked them. Because I think that's the big, if we and need to do something fast, and we get the recommendations. We're going to run a temporary line to let us get us through the summer or for a year if or we, whatever. If we need to. But we don't, need, we don't know yet how long the state will allow us to run the above ground and that's, sewer line. And that's why we that's made what, this motion to right. do that so right. we can start and the that's a typical the road. way they do in all towns. Okay. And that's all what we do. We got a motion and we got a second. Okay. Can we? I'm voting. I'm going to move the question. All right. Vote on it. All's in favor? Unanimous. Okay. All right, now, so. 
can I, I I'm asking the town manager do Sir. we need to get started on on thinking about a, 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 a special town meeting we already know what the ground rules are we know what the procedures are um, there are a number of things that need to happen before we do that first of all this board needs to vote that we need to have a special town meeting you're not prepared to do that yet right okay you need some evidence and information which should be sure be coming within the next four to six weeks uh, hopefully nothing happens between now and then mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I'm I got my pr my flying carpet out for prayer purposes so mm -hmm. Um, you know we're just going to keep on working forward trying to keep everything running and running in good order um, when we get our get the information back which Public Works has, has commissioned for mm -hmm. and we find out the pipe does need to be replaced then we'll be back to the board with a request with that information and with a request that you consider holding a special town meeting I have to tell you that if we go through the formal procedure for a special town meeting at this point or by the time we get that back we're probably talking at the annual town meeting yeah. just however, the way it is however we can ask the court to cut that short depending upon what the state says mm -hmm. through DES and through the Attorney General and through DOT DOT is our biggest bottleneck I, I just I just want to make a statement from my own point of view that I agree with with Regina and that, that I'm no junior engineer or amateur engineer. I just want to the, talk to the I know people. I agree. The, the pipes need to be replaced. That, that's my opinion. And uh, it, we it, don't want to run into it. I agree we, with We have our engineer right saying. here. Yep. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why we hired him, because he was an engineer. And we hired experts, and we hired too, and we want to listen to them. And th th we are listening to them. We're waiting for it. But they, we're, they're suggesting that we don't wait till we get it back to do it, but mm -hmm. to start the process so that if we do need to do it, we're that much farther ahead. Mm -hmm. if, Didn't because we just you vote on it, Rusty? Yes, I voted we did. for it too, but I still want to hear the experts. We all want to hear the experts. They, they don't. Can, can we uh, now? Yeah. Can we now um, take up the Tide Mill Road signage? That should be pretty quick. Sure, should. I'll move that we uh, uh, have the request to have signage. What is the request? The request is to try to direct the traffic down the regular road. Uh, of uh, the access to the uh, treatment plant and the uh, public works yard instead of having people cut down Tide Mill Road and make a problem for the residents on that road. Well, I think we, we have done that. We have the sign out on 101. We have put signs up on. Was that all done? That's been up there. It's been there. It's yeah. been there. It was, it was well, taken was down a for a short time, period of time during the winter. Oh, but the. the, the, the uh, the light lighted sign was going back up the other day. I saw it out there. Yeah, it was there this morning. It was so, not flashing. Any but they're, they're putting it back up yeah. in the spring like they have when the truck traffic does. Yeah. Right. But what oh. people have to understand oh. that live on Tide Mill Road is when a business has yeah. a Tide Mill Road address, yeah. they have a right to have trucks deliver right. to them. People using GPS, which is what most trucking companies do now. Yeah. They're not going to. They're not going to say, "Oh, go down this other road down here to get over to Tide Mill Road." They're going to tell you to go Tide Mill Road. We we've asked the businesses down there to suggest that they tell their yeah. their suppliers yeah. to use Hard Arts Way. Public Works is suggesting to people to use Hard Arts Way. I don't think you know. You talk about yeah. we we have a limited amount of resources. Right. Well, now you want to make more signs for something that people should already know. And so right, I, I think we've, we've done that. We put the mechanical sign out there, the lit sign. Other than short of that, we continue to work with the businesses. Okay. We continue to ask that they, when they trucks come in, just like we've done with, with Foss and the trucks on, on, on uh, Toll Farm Road, we continue to be vigilant to ask the trucks. But people that have that property down there have to realize when they bought there, there are some businesses down there that have truck traffic. Yeah, the businesses are all together at right. the end of the road. Right. So, so yeah. I, I, okay. I, 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 well, I, I saw the memo and I thought I'd yeah. ask. So, has anybody else got anything? Nope. If the police could, I think that we're concerned that uh, there's a little bit of sign overload. Uh, people, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'll say they ignore, but they've, they've been there so long they, they just no longer read them. But that the flashing message sign that we used last summer, the PD install, yeah. install maintain, was very, I thought, very effective. 
people, people aren't going to look at the us. sign that says they'll get something free if they go on the other road. The, people, people aren't going to look at a, public work. a sign that's on the side of the road and they're looking at the GPS and the GPS is telling them to go down there and they look and see that, that road is Tide Mill Road and they've got a Tide Mill a address to go to. The way you're going to do it is continue to tr correct people when they get down there. Say, hey, look, do us a favor. We have you know, the neighbors down here don't like the truck. When you come in, come in the other way, and and eventually, they'll get to everybody. I think the Train truckers uh, oh, yeah. coming down that you know 101 from 95, they pause it. Most of the time, you don't catch the light, yeah. so you sit at the light. Yeah. You, they you see watch it. the sign, Correct. and it reinforces, <laughs> you know, hey, that's where I got to go. So, I, okay. I th thank both of you for the work you're doing because this is a mess. All right. So take your rocks and go home. Yeah, take your rocks. All right. They just yeah. sent us yeah. home. Yeah. We don't want the rocks. Uh, <laughs> all right. Town manager report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we'd ask folks to please register the, your dog. All dog licenses expire by law on April 30th, 2018. The Church Street sewer main has been repaired, as you've heard, and is back in service, thank goodness. Contracts for the reconstruction of old mill, the Old Mill Pond Dam have been signed. Work will commence after all state and federal notifications have been completed and other preliminary notifications are completed and, and filed. Work on the Lafayette Road sewer main has been restarted. The goal is to complete all work by Memorial Day weekend without including paving uh, the roadway with a proper shim to smooth the coating on, on the existing roadway of uh, Lafayette Road. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day has been scheduled. It's going to be June 23rd, 2018. We'll start at 8 a.m. in the morning and end at noon time. Week where, of. Where are we week having of, week June of. 23rd. Yep. On your regular collection waste waste collection You're going to do that out in the park, parking lot here it's again? No, it's going to be at the Public Works Department. Okay, yep. thank you. It'll be at Public Works. Oh, the hazardous waste. Oh. Hazardous I see waste. what you're saying. I, yep. They've got a leaf uh, date, too. Yep. Um, tax collector's office is going to be closed this coming Wednesday the 18th. Okay. Please don't come in to visit because they won't be there. There'll be a training <laughs> at the state. Uh, Thursday, May 10th, Marston School Cafeteria, 7 p.m. Yep. We're going to have a, uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission is going to have a public hearing. Uh, topics on the agenda is a transportation grant for Route 1A. Hampton Beach traffic flow, parking areas at Hampton Beach, traffic and pedestrian safety issues. Please attend. They would like your input into the into what's going on, and we'll be scheduled for the reconstruction of U.S. Route One, One A. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. We we've been bombarded uh -oh. with um, a lot of folks sustained damage on the frontage of their property on the ocean front, mm -hmm. yeah. and and normally uh, we we wait until they come in and make an application to us after they talk to the state, but I keep on getting these piles of requests. Wow. to do emergency work and they're only good for 30 days um, my suggestion is that we contact these people that you give your approval to allow the work to be to move forward so it can be done before the summer arrives and we just get them to file the necessary paperwork with the town and allow them to complete it they'll be out of the way by the time summer comes so we do need a motion for that yes sir we do i'll make that motion second, second. all those in favor thank Unanimous. you um talked about the Hampton Beach Area Commission that was a good thing uh, environmental um, I sent the board a memorandum we've been dealing with false alarms for fire and police yeah. Yeah. we have ordinances it appears that those ordinances are unenforceable yeah. false alarms are classified in the statute as either misdemeanors or class B felonies those are all criminal activities uh, that need to be taken care of by the police department and reported by the fire department to them. Now, of the false alarms that we receive, we get about 250 to 300 false alarms in the fire department every year. But that's because people are working on systems. And, and when they work on the system, sometimes it triggers a false alarm. It's not a big deal. Uh, a lot of times they tell us before they even start working and we okay. anticipate it's going to come. I did talk to the chief and he has up to 12, depending upon the year, malicious false alarms, which are done on purpose. Those I think should be reported to the police department and they should go through proper investigation yep. to determine what happened. Yep. 
I, it's my request that the board authorize me to stop billing for false alarms and that we mm -hmm. look to change the ordinances to be in compliance with the general statutes. I'll second, Jim. All those in favor? All well, one, abs one abstention. Okay. Yeah. The last one I have is we have, as you know, Comcast neglected to sit down and negotiate with us at the expiration of their last contract. And we, <laughs> I talked them into sending in a contract renewal for three years simply because we don't want the Comcast system to die. It's too, right. We can't do that. Uh, they have now sent us a communication. They would like to commence negotiations. Good. And with your permission, I will arrange to have something start. Uh, you probably should think about appointing a cable negotiation committee. Mm. Good. And I will talk to the Comcast folks to make sure that nothing falls out of the wastebasket this time and we can actually get something done in the next year. Good. Make a motion to give him authority to do that. Sure. Second. All those in favor? Four, one abstention. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Oh, we have one. I have our uh, deputy <laughs> public oh. director that would like to speak first. She's biting at the bit. Yes. Um, one of them we forgot to give to the town manager. Well, we were able to post it on the website. But uh, this year, because of the nor'easters that we had, the department is doing a brush pickup. This is this year. This is not something we normally do. Um, this is in addition to our leaf pickup. It will begin April 23rd. The week of April 23rd. The week of April 23rd on the day of your rubbish and right. recycling removal. It will be a hired company. It will not be our town trucks mm -hmm. uh, or equipment. And a no greater than six inches in diameter branches. or six feet in length. Branches. Branches. In addition to the leaves in the bag. And they need to be separate. Yeah. The brush pile and your limbs or those type of things brought out to your curb line. Yep. Uh, separate from your bagged or barreled leaf pickup. Yep. Uh, so again, that is beginning the week of April 23rd. Good deal. Uh, so that was the one I didn't get. And then one I just heard as I was walking out, the Lafayette Road Sewer Project. Yes. Again, because summer started yesterday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were not able to start last night. We were not working today because of the quantity of rain yeah. we had. That is an unsafe condition. We will not be working Memorial Day weekend, i.e. the Good. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. Our goal is to have our main pipe work substantially completed by Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. There are still other components that need to get done Oh, we talked last week when I was here about a shim coat to try to provide a more smooth surface. Um, the final testing of the sewer line, yeah. um, there could be a tie-in or two, but the major excavation mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping be done, you know, late May, early June, and then just that cleanup after. Right. But to rest assured, we're not working the Memorial Day holiday weekend. We know that's a heavily traveled weekend. Very good. And I just wanted to clarify that for everybody at home. Thank you. All right. Any any questions for the town manager in his report? Good report. I just wanted to say that um, I had I've given up Comcast, and uh, so have I. Yeah, and <laughs> I uh, when I did bring my boxes back, I discovered that I had asked for a five ninety nine charge for an extra box. Actually, there might have been two of them. I returned them in um, December of 2016, and I asked them to remove them, uh, you know, to, to take them back. But when I brought the boxes in to Portsmouth, I did it personally so I wouldn't have to wait on the phone forever, they said, well, we can only do it for four months. <clears throat> so today, it's three weeks after I quit Comcast, they sent me a bill for $168 like I never canceled it. So I called them up and they, you know, after being on the phone for 25 minutes, they finally, I got through to someone that said, yeah, you did cancel. And we have an, another bill for $69 that we owe you. But yet they sent me a bill that I, that I should pay it for $168. Well, so then I thought, well, now I am, I, I, was, I wasn't gonna bother asking for the four times 599 because I didn't think it was worth it. Well, as long as I was there, I asked for it again. And the guy that I was talking to said, well, as a courtesy, we give only four months. And I said, well, I did pay it for a whole year. 
And uh, so then I mentioned that it says on the bill that you can call your Board of Selectmen if you're not. <laughs> and I said, you know, I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen. I said, in fact, I'm on the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> I'm going to take this bill and ask that it put in the um, complaint section because we've all seen the complaint and every single written complaint is supposed to be in there. So he says, well, in that case, if you're going to do that, I'm not going to give you the $5.99 for the four months. <laughs> So I said, really? I said, why don't you just let me speak to the supervisor? So then he got the supervisor, and the supervisor gave me <laughs> a credit for all the 12 months. So yeah. if you're not happy with Comcast, Talk for the supervisor. you need to ask yeah. to speak to the supervisor. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so now they owe me $144. All right. It's a good thing. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. All right. Wait till you get the check. Now we're and no I canceled. I'm no longer a client. As I, as I recall, we had a similar situation five or six years ago mm -hmm. when we were negotiating at that point in time. It actually got so bad that we actually handed out the owner, the, the chairman of the board of Comcast, we handed out his, handed out his phone number. And things <laughs> went started going really well after that. <laughs> okay, we All need business. To we have move. pins. Yep. Yep. There you are, Mr. Chairman. So we did get a response from that company. We, we sent to two companies that appeared to be acceptable. One of them responded. And these are the samples they sent to us. Uh, you said that if you were going to consider pins, you would consider them on the basis that they had to be metal. They had to be of good quality. And I think these are of good quality. On the bottom of that is the town pin. That we have now. That we have now. And the thought would be that we would use that same pin but with a decorative design on it for the years of service and I think we sent a, a, a photocopy of this around to everybody if I'm not mistaken anybody want a plastic pin no there's a trash can over there I think in fact Fred I got a couple of pins oh good let me throw them away for you <laughs> no I don't I, I, saw right. I so, don't I don't like the idea of pins uh, well I'd rather see a, being a certificate. Well, being a we do 20, that too. 28 or 30 huh? year old. I still think they're silly, but that's all right. Being a 28 year full time employee of this town and, and over that with, with and that. get a plastic I pin. was highly insulted when I got a plastic Well, pin. I would think. So uh, I think we should do some sort of recognition pin. I think putting the dates on is an excellent idea. Uh, and so, anybody else going I think it's a good idea. And I think putting the dates on it's a good idea. And I think a pin's a good idea. I think it, I, we do the certificate also, and we, and yep. we frame the certificate, and we have Absolutely. people come in here and we give okay. it to them. But I think the pin's something they can wear. Absolutely. Yes. If it's bigger than that, they're not going to wear it. Right, right. So it's something that they can <laughs> put on a lapel or something. And I've worked in Hampton for X amount of years. I'm proud of it. I think it's a good idea. Okay. So. I agree, too. Well, do you need a motion? Uh, a motion to approve, and we will get the pin that is the least expensive but looks the best. The least expensive was the plastic pin. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, the motion. metal ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion, but I don't, I don't care if it's the least expensive. Yeah. I agree. I It'll be the best that. looking. We have a motion and a second to one. get the, the best looking pin for yep. the. Yep. So. All right. All those in favor? No matter right. about the cost. I'm opposed. Four, yep. one opposed. Okay. Anything on the old business? Yes. We just had a work session with uh, Public Works with Chris and Jen. And they're talking right. about the Lafayette Road sewer project. And, and I think uh, it's well done. However, in Article 9, the Lafayette Road project did include the stupid ornamental lighting. And I think we need to take time to sit down and talk about that. How many times are we going to bring this up in a meeting? Well, that's mean, what we're having a meeting seriously, for, we've Jim. Talked, we've talked about it and no. talked about no, it. No, we haven't talked about it. We haven't talked about the report and the huge amount of money that potentially no that will cost. There's no huge amount of money that it will cost. We have talked about it. That was a worn article. It was put forth. It was passed soundly. And so we're moving forward with it. Uh, the one one mistake that was made, they called it ornamental lighting. It should have been freestanding lighting. Because Excuse whether me. 
Excuse me. Excuse okay. me. Yes. That that Lafayette Road Hampton removal relocation of overhead electric infrastructure. That has nothing to do with feasibility study. That has yes, nothing. It does. That no, it does not. That has to do with a uh, warrant article from the previous year that they are still working on. Warrant article nine. Okay, so whatever we're working on from the it's with the stupid lighting is in this report. That's it, it but that's not. Well, we need to talk about it. Well, well then whichever. That we, that we haven't got all the information back from that yet, and that's what they are from still this? working on. But from that, yes. We're not going to start that. chopping down. Well, Fred, Fred threatened that's, to saw down the utility poles a couple of meters. Only if you order them removed or not removed. So we're not, okay. and when, when we get all the information back and the public works director can come back with us with what they have, then we will discuss it. I just don't want it to slip through the cracks. It hasn't, it won't. nothing has slipped through the cracks. I'll guarantee you all that. Right. Anything um, else on the old business? Yeah, I, yes, a couple of things. New signs now that the town forest article has passed we really need to update the signs in Jaunty's Lane and White's Lane please maybe and they, do that they've, Fred? they've already been asked they've to do already, that however okay yeah however that's yes. that falls in line with trying to fix a sewer pipe and we're getting the sewer pipe fixed first right and that's it okay anything else on the old business oh um one more quick one sure hydrant report from Aquarian that is unacceptable. We need to get them in here and sit down and talk about servicing those hydrants. No. May we put them on the agenda, Fred? Well, they, they're it's coming up for at some point, future meeting. They'll be coming in in June. So when we when well, they come in June, okay. we'll talk well, to them. We really need to tackle that hydrant report. I don't oh, disagree with you. you. I don't yep. disagree with you. Okay, that's it. All right, new business. We already did the vacancy. Vacancy we've already done. We're gonna wait yep. and hear back from them. Letter that the government, the governor got that. Yeah. <clears throat> you instructed us to do that. I think you've already signed it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the new business? Nope. You want Seeing none, I have a Mark wants a motion. Yeah, we have a motion, Mr. Chairman, under the uh, <coughs> for a non public session under RSA ninety one hyphen capital A colon three Roman two small A small C and small E. Personnel reputation and litigation. Yes. I'll I will so move. Motion by Mary Louise, <laughs> seconded by Second. Regina. All those in favor? Roll call, aye. Please. Roll call, please. Uh, aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Channel 22. Thank you, Max.